It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, search for answers. The death toll in Hawaii approaching 100 people. The deadliest wildfire in modern U.S. history. It looks like a war zone. Yeah, he's bad. He's bad. Residents now picking up the pieces. We need medicine. We need pillows, blankets, food. We're live on Maui with the latest and a rare look at the heart of the burn zone. Plus, caught on camera. New details on that deadly Pennsylvania home explosion. It literally lifted you off your feet? Threw us off the couch to the floor. The cause of the blast now under investigation as neighborhood heroes share their stories. You may have saved his life. I hope so. Then living legend Craig has an exclusive sit down with Dwayne Wade as he gets inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. All the, all the memories come back, like everything that you've been through. The moment you wanted to quit, you know, like everything rushed back. A look back at his long lasting career, plus a powerful family moment from the ceremony. And oh brother, Jonas Brothers kick off their world tour at Yankee Stadium and we're backstage to see it all. We're out there playing 67 songs in the gauntlet. This is definitely by far the most ambitious thing we've ever tried to do. Just ahead, our exclusive behind the scenes access that practically makes us one of the family. I've got a cold, a cold chill going down my spine. Thank you for including oh, me. Now Jonas Post. Yeah. Today, Monday, August 14th, 2023. Celebrating our 35th anniversary. On a sister's trip from Columbus, Ohio. Here for Sadie's fifth birthday. From Jacksonville, Florida. Today is my mom's big day. She's turning 103 in Sarasota, Florida. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, great grandma Bob. this morning. Yes. Great crowd out there on the plaza. Wow. Great. Welcome back to today. So glad you started your week with us. Monday morning, Chanel's in for Craig. Nice to have you along. The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. Oh, welcome back. All right, the Jonas Brothers have spent nearly two decades in the spotlight, and this year is one of their biggest yet. Yeah, they kicked off their world tour over the weekend at a very meaningful place for them, and guess who they invited along? Ooh. Their long-lost brother, That's Jake true. Soberoff. It's cousin, cousin. <laughs> I don't know why I got the invite, but I got the invite. Nick, Joe, and Kevin invited really all of us to their concert at New York's Yankee Stadium last night. We got an incredible behind-the-scenes tour, and let me tell you, it was an epic night. The Jonas Brothers are on top of the world. Yankee Stadium, make some noise! Bringing down the house at a sold out Yankee Stadium last night. Kevin, Joe, and Nick, who grew up right before our eyes. Have sold 20 million albums. I'm a sucker for you. Yeah. And their music's been streamed more than 13 billion times. Their new release, The Album, is out, and the Jonas Brothers are now embarking on a massive world tour in 20 countries. And their first stop is right here at Yankee Stadium in New York City. I'm very excited. The Jonas Brothers invited us exclusively to go behind the scenes on their tour. Let's go check it out. Hello. Well, hey, hello guys. There. What's up, fellas? Welcome, Welcome to our new home. Look at it. Look at this hospitality. We've been expecting you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. The band's kicking things off at a venue close to their hearts. You guys have memories of growing up and going to games in the old Yankee Stadium? Yes, we couldn't really afford to come to games, but I think Yankees would donate tickets to a bunch of different churches, and so we would get access to it. And uh, we would sit way up in the nosebleed, so it's full circle to be back here playing a show. Is it true that way back when, 2008 or something, you guys were offered to play Yankee Stadium and you didn't think you could sell it out, so you turned it down? That is true. We genuinely thought there's no way we could sell this place out. It feels a little bit more special than it would back then. 20 some years almost into our career to be able to have fans that support us this much. The band's performing five albums each night, a celebration of all of their music. We're out there playing 67 songs. It is a gauntlet. This is definitely by far the most ambitious thing we've ever tried to do. 
Each brother took us on a personal behind the scenes tour. First, inside Joe's dressing room. This is my dressing room. This is, and you did, this is amazing, thank you. You, you yes. designed every little aspect of this yourself. I did, yes. I like to have a film, my favorite film, Back to the Future, on the TV. All your goodies. Um, but I've got a bunch of toys and trinkets. I think it's healthy to remind myself, like, to have fun on and off stage. I've got some photos of me and Sophie over here. Should a lot of Simpsons. A lot of Simpsons. Actually, I'm slowly trying to make this room look like the Simpsons living room. But yeah, somebody did Simpson art of me and Sophie. I spent a lot of time in here, so I want to make sure it feels like home. Nick picked up the tour. But this is, you know, where our family watches from. With a trip to the soundboard, where all the magic happens. And we have an amazing crew on this tour. They kind of bring the, the dream to life, make sure it sounds right. It's, it's a big operation, 100 plus people. It's almost mind blowing to think about that all of that audio at some point is coming right through here. Yes, it all comes through here. And there's also actually the act of picking the songs. You, you create the set list. I spent literally three, four months building this thing out with our team, song by song, where we could tell the story we wanted to tell about the journey we were on at that point in our life and career. Wow. And then Kevin took a center stage for the best view in the house. So welcome to the stage. This There's is Yankee unbelievable. Stadium. This stage is built and broken down every single time we do a show, which is special. And this is our incredible band. Say hi, everybody. What's up, you guys? Nobody gets to do this. Nobody gets no. to stand here like this. So what does it feel you, like? You need to stand here with me. Okay. okay. Come here. So you come out here. And you look out and you realize they're like 50,000 people sold out two nights in a place that we said no to many years ago. We even got to join their pre-show huddle. I say every note matters. I say every person matters. Well, I say what well, we do matters. And then we go, let's get it. And we go. So that means you Has anybody ever what? been in the middle of that before? No. Uh, no. No. Actually. Welcome. I've got a cold, a cold chill going down my spine. Thank oh, you for including you're me. You're now a Jonas brother. Yeah. The Jonas Brothers took the stage in full force. Celebrate with me tonight. Celebrate tonight. Celebrate we got time. Celebrate tonight. Those are my friends. It was indeed a night to celebrate. The show was a home run. Oh, I love that. I, had, I really did have an amazing time. And not because everybody, like you see, kept confusing me for a Jonas yeah, Brothers yeah, as I would yeah. walk around. I said, not with them. But they kept saying there's going to be so many surprises. Last night, Jimmy Fallon came out at intermission. Oh, cool. He did karaoke with the audience. Oh, freaking oh, out. And they said there's going to be so cute. many more. There's oh, Jimmy. That's oh, that's so cool. Cool. He was good. They said there are going to be so many more surprises throughout the tour. And I just I thank you to those guys because they, they really rolled out the red carpet for us. And that's it was awesome. uh, it was amazing. They brought you in the huddle, man. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy. Hey. It was crazy. Sobo is a Joe Bro. Joe Bro, Sobo. Jacob, Jacob Jonas, Sobro. Sobro. I like Sobro. Sobro. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm in. Way to go. go. Thank you, guys.
who come to see us. A great crowd, SG. You know why I love right this crowd? Right here on the plaza. I go over there, I'm like, hi, my girlfriend over here just tells me, stranger, she goes, you got lipstick on your teeth. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what good friends that's do. That's love. It was a big weekend for basketball fans and some icons of the game as the newest members of the Hall of Fame were inducted among them Miami Heat legend Dwayne Wade. Yeah, at the end of his speech, the he Hall spoke directly to God's his dad, God. Dwayne Wade Sr., so crediting him for making him the player he became and then inviting him onto the stage to mm. share the spotlight. What a moment. That's beautiful. Craig had the chance to talk with Dwayne ahead of the ceremony. Hey, Craig. Hey, ladies. Good to see you. You know, I mean... Here's the thing, as you know, Dwayne Wade's resume on the court pretty much speaks for itself. One of the best players of an entire generation, but he told me exclusively on Friday ahead of that ceremony that the Hall of Fame has always been his dream come true. Oh, kick up your heels. Dwayne Wade, D. Wade, Flash. What a play by Dwayne Wade. Winner of three championships, member of 13 All-Star teams. Selected as one of the NBA's greatest 75 players ever. Now, the 41-year-old is a member of the Hall of Fame. As we sit here, yeah. Dwayne Wade is about to be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Just one more time. Can you say that again? <laughs> as we sit here, <laughs> Dwayne Wade is about to be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah. When you got the call, what'd you think? It became real yeah. when I got the call, you know, and all the all the memories come back, like everything that you've been through. The moment you wanted to quit, you know, the, everything rushed back. But ultimately, I was just like, are y'all sure y'all got the right number? Oh, stop. <laughs> Wade's drive shaped in part by his early years on the south side of Chicago. He played at Marquette before being drafted by the Miami Heat in 2003. Now, he's a member of a new class, alongside NBA players Dirk Nowitzki, Tony Parker, and Paul Gasol. It's an honor to, to obviously go into the Hall, Hall of Fame, but to go in with Dirk, yeah. to go in with Paul Gasol, I mean, the, yeah. the, the class that you're going in with. Incredible, bro. That's, that's some serious company. This is one of the greatest Hall of Fame classes ever. And what a way to end my career, to be a part of one of the greatest teams ever to go into the Hall of Fame. Speaking of teams, you, you played on some legendary ones. Looking back on it, is there a team that you would put up against any other team in the history of the NBA? Yeah, 2012 Miami Heat championship team. We're some bad boys. With that dude number six on that wing and that dude number three on that wing and that dude number one and yeah. so forth and so on. We're some bad boys. That was, that was a hell of a squad. A few days ago, Pat Riley said, D. Wade is the greatest player in the history of the Miami Heat. And there have been some other great players who played for the Heat. Yeah, a lot. Were you surprised when you heard that? Absolutely not. I am. Man, you own it. Yeah, I own it. I yes, work for it. Yes. Yeah, I put 15 years of blood, sweat, and all the tears and everything into yes. it. Yes. It's a lot of great players that's come through Miami. It would be a lot of great players. And one day, it would be someone else that would, would challenge it, and they would say they're the greatest. But... Uh, not today. Today is me. Wade retired from the game in 2019. Since then, he's focused on charity work and various business ventures. A couple years ago, you became part of an ownership group, part owner of Utah Jazz now. Yes, sir. How, how is that, being a part owner of a team, how has that changed your perspective? It's changed my perspective um, a lot because it's a lot that you don't know. So now I'm getting a chance to be exposed to the business of the game that has done everything for me. There are not a lot of folks that look like us uh, that are part of ownership groups of major sports teams. Yeah. Um, how do you change that? Our, our, our community is not built enough to where we have enough money to be <laughs> the majority owner of you know teams that are selling for six, you know, four to six billion dollars. Right. And so we got to continue to build our wealth and our economy, right? Before we can you know be majority. But right now, I take minority because I'm able to get in there. I'm able to learn. Wade says he's also learning a lot from his children. He shares a blended family with his wife. Smile. Actress Gabrielle Union, Wade's daughter Zaya, came out as transgender in 2020. Since then, Wade and Union have been vocal advocates for LGBTQ plus rights. How important is it for that to be a part of your legacy? I didn't set out for it to be. It's important for me to support my daughter. Um, and in the, midst of do in the middle of doing that, I've become an ally to a community that um, I didn't know a lot about that I have that I've had to get educated 
you know, about. I say it to my daughter all the time. I'm so thankful that I'm your father. Uh, I've learned so much about love. Dwayne Wade, now you see me. Oh, no. Now you don't. What do you want them to say about the way you played the game? That I gave my all to it. And at the end of the day, my all landed me 13 All-Stars, three championships, top 75, Hall of Fame, and so forth and so on. You can't take it from me. I did it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Thank Congratulations. You. I appreciate it. Wow. D. Wade's always been just a, a class act. By the way, um, if there was a, a Hall of Fame of fashion, Tell me uh, about Dwayne it. Wade would be in that as well. He's always been one of these guys that's been... Yeah, he's like Al Roker, you know, always considered sort of sort of fashion forward. Down to the socks. Uh, so oh, so we're going to talk about that part of his legacy coming up in just a bit on the third hour and where he got that sense of style. Well, By the way, your sweater, you're rocking I was that. Gonna say, I got to say, you're the one wearing a cashmere oh, cable knit hoodie there. <laughs> where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Woods. He can't tell you. It looks like, are, it looks like the folklore in- album for Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Back now, 844, and you know it's going to be a great day when Tracy Morgan swings by our studio. He's been making us laugh for years, and now, guys, he's got a new comedy special. It's called Taking It Too Far. Tracy is tackling subjects like his childhood, his love life, his life-changing accident in 2014. Take a look. We all got baggage. Everybody in the room got baggage. Mine just happened to be Louis Vuitton. Speaking of Louis Vuitton, see, I can't, it's hard for me to date women now, because they all know I got money. Everybody know I got hit by the truck? Everybody know that? I thank the Lord it was Walmart, not Walgreens. All right, Trace, good to see you in person. And before we dive into this, we've been told this project doesn't apply to the ongoing strikes, because we haven't, haven't had a lot of celebrities in studio, right. because this comedy special is not kind of covered by all that stuff. So let's right. get started there. Hi. How you doing? How, you, how are you doing? I miss you. I miss you too. Okay, awesome. so you called this comedy special "Taking It Too Far." Okay, why did you decide that that was where you were going to live right now? Well, I've, 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 in my life, I've had a lot of physical trauma. Yeah. I was playing high school football. I yeah. broke my leg. The bone popped out. Yeah. Oh. Then I got hit by a truck. My femur yeah. was crushed. Yeah. I, my, my brain sir, I broke every bone in my fat. Yeah. Lot. You've been through everything. So now I want to have fun. Yeah. And sometimes you got to take it too far but, just to have fun. So that's what I named it, because I'm on stage having fun. Are you worried about, like, there's cancel culture everywhere. Are you worried about that? No. I'm not scared. 
I just feel like there's no place in, in, in comedy for that. On a stage is where you should be able to say what you want to say. Yeah. And if I say something that you don't like, you can't cancel me. Yeah. Why? For what? What did I do to you? I'm just speaking my mind. Yeah. And that's the beauty of doing stand-up comedy. You get to say what you're feeling and what you're thinking. Yeah. And sometimes what you're thinking. Yeah, you do, and you got you get a lot of laughs. So absolutely. This comedy thing, this comedy special covers a lot of things. You were dating in your 50s. Mr. Tracy Morgan. I'm dating in my 50s? How Who told it? you that? That's what sources have told me. I didn't nobody tell you that. <laughs> Are dating. you dating? But no, I'm actually, I'm just, I just recently, I'm a single man. Yeah. I'm single, just recently divorced, and I'm a girl dad. Yeah. So I don't got time for all the other stuff. I'm a girl dad. My daughter is my girl. Okay. That's me, my baby. Tell me about your baby. What's well, she like? I just took her to Disneyland you her and all her friends. That's my booby, my stinker Wait. mama right there. I call her <laughs> stinker mama. What? Do you I call took her to, <laughs> yeah, that's my stinker mama. I took her to Disney World, her and all her friends, like 18 of them. Wait took them all to Disney World. They got on all the rides. I mean, these rides were mind blowing. Did you get on any rides? No, I ain't get on no rides. I'm too old for that. I ain't getting on no rides. I thought one time I'm the whole vacation. <laughs> yeah. So when I got the bill a month later, my mind was blown. <laughs> I was like, what the what? Because when I was growing up, all we had was Coney Allen. Yeah. That Wasn't was no it. Mickey Mouse. And I, I mean, there was a guy named Mickey, but you ain't want to mess with him. <laughs> that was the way it worked. You ain't want to mess with Mickey. <gasps> all right. So let's get back to your dating. So you're not dating, but you are single. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, or do you think about it down the road? Is it something that you might consider, or is it just too far away? Yeah. If, if she comes along, I'm in my life, I'm searching for that woman that if the mansion and the cars and all that go away, she's still gonna be right there. That is hard to find. It's two Greek words, erosa and agape. I'm looking for agape. Uh -huh. That's where you see two 90 year olds still holding hands and loving each other. How do you Very know? rare and everybody want it. How do you know when, when the person is looking at you and not at what you have? Time. Yeah. Time. You gotta give everything time. When you first meet someone, you already like each other. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Now you need time to grow and be comfortable around each other, and that takes time. Yeah. All, everything in life takes time. I mean, what you know, when they want to punish you, what they give you? Yeah. Time. Yeah. When they want to reward you, what they give you? More time. You could blow this earth out the universe. Time gonna keep going on. Time. That's good. I mean, I don't want to offend nobody. Michael Jackson is dead. Prince is dead. Whitney Houston is dead. Guess what? Time went on. Yeah. Time. Time. We all need time. We all want time. Um, before you go, how are you feeling? I noticed in your, in I your feel special great. you were sitting down a little bit. What was yeah, going on? I, I just recently, two and a half months ago, I had a spinal fusion in my back. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I had a fracture in my first, fifth vertebrae. Yeah. vertebrae. I thought it was from the accident, but the doctor said, no, you've been had that. Okay. That's from playing high school football. You feel it? Yeah, I, I just posted a picture of me playing high school football. Yeah. And I was running a touchdown against Kennedy High School yeah. on that play. That's me. That's you. You're running a touchdown. Clinton. Come yeah, on. I was good. You I was were good. good. Joe Morris was my hero for the Giants. But you're feeling better? You're feeling back I'm feeling. healing. Healing. I'm getting better. I walk with a cane. Yeah. And I'm healing. I can use the cane. Sometimes I don't need it. Sometimes I need it. Wow. We're just so happy to see you. You feeling good, though? You're happy? I feel great. Come on. I feel on. great. I can't wait till people see the special. It's take pretty it. funny to me. Yeah. Because I'm having fun. And <laughs> I'm taking it you. too far. You always take it too far. Yeah. Tracy, we love A lot you. of things have happened. Yes. Between comedians and audience members. So yeah. All that We've I got seen to be that. said. Yeah. All right. You cover it all. Tracy, we love you. Thank you for coming I love to you see more. us in the studio. Thank you. You can check out Taking It Too Far it debuts on Mac. It's on this Thursday. Yep.
We are back. Time for today bestsellers. These are fan favorites, ad adored by our viewers and our Shop Today team with incredible reviews and ratings all under 40 bucks. And here to walk us through them, Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post. Remember, you can shop along with us by scanning that QR code. It is at the bottom of your screen. Hi, Chassie. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited about this first one because I've used it and it really works. Yes. And you have a fancy demo to show we us. We sure do. So these are little LED strip lights, Savannah. And they're so cool because you can add lighting instantly. Yeah. Anywhere, like you said, a stairwell, a closet. There's a little adhesive on the back. Oh, it's easy. 3M that doesn't mess up your walls, according to the brand. And check this out. Do you charge them? Is that how they? Yes, okay. they're rechargeable via USB. Look, they're also great for in cabinets and under oh, cabinet lighting. I mean, lighting. I need this. You know how you're like squinting what's yes. in there? And they even have a motion sensor mode. Which oh, so is if you close them, they turn cool. off? Yes, and they turn off. Oh, my gosh. And the brand says they last up to 30 hours on a single charge. I mean, they come in three for around $36. Yeah. No electricity, just stick them anywhere you need I lighting. I think it's amazing. I mean, for like a utility cabinet, yeah. any of these dark corners, yeah, great. garage, okay. pantry even. Now tell me about okay. these organizing I pouches and how you use them. I love a pouch yeah. to organize. Yeah, me I mean, too. I'm obsessed. Like, you know, you can just zip up your clutter yeah. and put it in there. And what I like about these, they come in a set of 24 really cute colors, so three in each yeah, they color. They fit a lot of stuff, too. So oh, much geez. stuff. They're like 13 by 10. Yeah. So if you like color coding, also yeah. they're waterproof, a really heavy They're good in mesh. a kid's backpack. Too. So good in a kid's backpack. Yes. But I mean, the possibilities are endless. Like you can organize your makeup, put all your lip stuff in one, put yes. all your face stuff See, in another. See, sunscreen over there. School supplies. These are even great for you know, like kids' games. I mean, the box oh. always is destroyed. Always. Put Sorry, them all in there. Or me. puzzle pieces. So yeah. under twenty dollars a set of twenty-four. Okay. So shoe organization. I bet your shoes are pretty organized. I mean, depends on the day. Okay, yeah. That, that is a pain point for me. Yes. I've not figured out the system, and these are really cool. These are called shoe slots. Yeah. They're like a little double decker shoe rack. Oh, that's so cute. So you can fit sh two shoes in the space you would fit one. So that essentially doubles your shoe storage. Oh yeah, space saver. Okay. Incredible. And so they've got four different heights so you can do heels or, you know, flats or, you know, your sneakers, you kind of adjust any them. shoe. Okay. And I'm just imagining like if I had all of these in my closet, how beautiful that might oh, look. Oh, it would. It would look very boutique. -y. <laughs> very boutique. -y. You would look very fancy. And a set of 20 for, okay. you know, around $35. So that's really cool. Okay. Another place I struggle. I love hats. a hat. Right. My husband also has 100 baseball caps. Right. So, I mean, I st uh, my hats take up so much room. I stack them up yeah, so and I then they get all find yeah, them I know. and they get crushed. This is so easy. So this is just a little Velcro hat holder oh. that you put right on, you know, your average coat hanger. It's got 10 clips, so you can fit 10 hats wow. of any size. Also, it comes in a set of two for under 10 bucks. So, I mean, that's 20 hats, or you can use this to organize scarves or belts yeah, or really smart. anything. It's so easy. And, and you I, can really see, see them, too. Right? Well, I mean, I think if I can see something, I, I might wear it. it. So it's like shopping your closet, yes. finding new stuff all the time. I love that. Love okay, that. Okay, so Savannah. We've got three, That's I mean, pretty. transitional pieces that I think are, you know, have elevated details, like this little short sleeve mm -hmm. sweater. I mean, it's got a great little um, stretch here, but look at this little scallop. Yeah. So cute. And if you can see. You say scallop, I would have said scallop. Is it scallop as, as I've been saying it wrong? It's both. Okay. It's both, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And then just, and look at these little puff sleeves. Yeah, I think so this cute. is so great. And with this, you know, it's great to keep, you know, at the office maybe, throw it in yeah. your bag. You can, you know, layer it over a tank or a tea or even, you know, turn a summer dress. Yeah, into nice sort of quality. A transitional. It feels good. Yeah. Good so transitional. It starts at around $17. Okay. And then finally. Okay. I love a balloon sleeve. Yeah, so this is sort forgiving. of like a statement making staple, but it's got a four season fabric, which I think is really useful. And it's around, it's, you know, starting under $20. Um, it, you know, you can wear it untucked. You can tuck it in. It's a great piece. And lastly, I mean, I think probably the most versatile piece in your closet. Yeah. A great mini skirt. Scan the QR code. Yes. It's all there. We'll be back right after your local news. Thanks, Jassy. Thank you. This morning on the third hour of today, back to school, off to a bumpy start. Still waiting on this bus at 9:10.
Schools nationwide facing a bus driver shortage. How some districts are getting creative to get kids to the classroom. Plus, a different set of wheels in our series, Grit. I am currently now in Mexico. We'll meet the young man who finished an epic 20,000 mile bike trip and find out why he did it. Then later, the four-legged stars of the new movie, Strays, unleashed the real-life pups voiced by A-listers like Will Ferrell and Jamie Foxx, live in Studio 1A. And doubleheader. Jonas Brothers kicking off their world tour with two sold-out shows at Yankee Stadium. And guess what? We've got an exclusive behind-the-scenes look. Today, Monday, August 14th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good Monday morning and welcome to the third hour of today. Great to see you. I'm Al along with Chanel. And Good morning. Ellen. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you guys. And Craig's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. He was on vacation. He's on vacation. <laughs> but he took a little bit of a break to go one-on-one -on -one with one of the newest Basketball Hall of Famers. And it's awesome. We want to thank you for starting our week off. How was yeah, your weekend? Yeah, it was a good weekend. It was a good weekend. How was yours? Uh, mine was fun. So, you know, the boys wanted to see the Barbie movie, but I feel like the girls have made such a thing of it because they're wearing pink. So kind of uh -huh. like, let's wear all black. I'm like, <laughs> okay. fine. So he's like, Mom, you even have to wear a black hat. And then, of course, wow. he took a picture. So there's that. The boys. That. But it was a cute movie. Um, and then... My girlfriends had a slumber party. Oh, oh, it was so much fun. We went shopping first. Shout out to Brene Blewett. She has a an event um, in Brooklyn where we support small businesses, mm -hmm. um, and it was amazing. Um, and then we just stayed out. I called my husband. I'm like, everybody spend the night. Do you care? And he was like, Okay. It's really fun. So it was fun. It's funny when you're like seven, eight years old. Kids like to hang, or girls like to hang right. with each other. You get to high school, college, you think you need boys. Right. And then get to 45 and you're like, we're okay. My girls again. You're having the best yeah. summer. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you really are. Like, and your right. summer hasn't been too bad. I either. know. It's been good. My mom actually came up to visit this oh, weekend. Yay. Um, she lives down in Florida, so she hasn't been up to see the boys in a while. So there's there, that's my mom on the right. Um, so it was just like a fun weekend, Easy. you know, hanging out. The boys have literally been playing golf every single day. All they right. have the bug. They wake up and they sit there. They've all got their like little golf clubs and then just breakfast time with mom and the kids. Oh. And it was just a good, you know, just a good family. I love that. Family weekend. Easy good easy. for the soul. What about you? Not much. You know, I got to. You say not well, much, but on Instagram, you're walking miles and miles. Well, the, we the, the weather was fun. And, and I just kind of got a little nuts and was playing music out in the, uh, out the backyard. And Deborah was just really <laughs> she thought I was going, now. if you pull, pull this up a little bit, I don't know if we have the sound of it. Where but was this? This was at home? our front yard. Okay. But I guess we can't, because there's music. Uh, oh. Yeah, but it's you singing. Oh, here we go. You had that blasting yeah, in the front yard. Do not post that. You look like a lunatic. <laughs> do not post that. Please, please, please. And you posted it anyway. Well, of course. <laughs> the, the, the gauntlet was thrown down. Are you like just in the She's front? The yeah, just like... dancing. I had the, had the boom bag. <laughs> and then we went, we were in Hudson and ate at one of our favorite spots, uh, like a men country in, uh, in Hudson. And uh, I just, love I it. had some friends over. Did, you know, just uh, sat, sat in the backyard. And just, I love uh, it. Oh, look that's at awesome. that. Wait, what is that in the front there? That's Astrid from. Uh, from uh, Legumian Country, but that that food that was uh, it was a, it's a uh, a pork belly roast from uh, a great uh, oh. uh, 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 charcuterie called Raven and Boar. Mm. So, uh, the, so nice. the, that's the, the one. Delicious. Yeah, right. summer is summering. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, for a lot of kids this weekend, it was the last taste of summer. Summer all over the country. Kids are going back to school, and this year, right off the bat, there's a big problem. A shortage of bus drivers. Mm. This is all over the country. Let's go to NBC Sam Brock. He's live with more. It's one of those things where some people take them for granted, but we need our bus drivers, Sam. Yeah, Chanel, good morning, guys. Good morning. It has been a crisis for years. Now it feels like it's kind of hitting a crescendo. And I'll give you an example. In Wake County, North Carolina, administrators there are asking parents to just figure out a way to get your kids to school in Chicago. Another example, it's free transit cards, guys, for qualifying families. And then in the Louisville, Kentucky area, they have canceled four of the first five days of classes because of this bus fiasco, forcing many families to get creative. This morning in Kentucky's largest school system, classes are canceled as Jefferson County scrambles to fix what administrators call a transportation disaster. Still waiting on this bus at 910. This after some students were stuck on school buses until 10 at oh night while heading home after the first day yeah, of school last week. 
I'm the parent of a JCPS third grader and fourth grader. I have been in the last few days and I bet in the next several really frustrated and really lonely. The district has more than 90,000 students and its superintendent now apologizing to them for the new school bus routing system that backfired. We should have anticipated those problems better than what we did and when we did not do that. The frustration over school buses spreads far and wide. They're 15 minutes early or 15 minutes late. Well, sometimes they usually, if they're late to their next route, they bypass the stop. With a nationwide driver shortage impacting 80% of districts, according to Hop Skip Drive, lack of competitive pay, recruiting problems, and strict regulations, all making it hard to fill positions. Our kids are going to be the ones to suffer because they can't get to school, because we can't get them there. No bus. Across the nation, a variety of temporary solutions are underway. In Chicago, where the district short half their bus drivers, or around 600 of them, the city is now offering free transit cards to qualifying families. Honestly, it breaks my heart because we have students, we have kids that really, they need to get to school. In Hillsborough County, Florida, with a roughly 200 driver deficit, the school is suggesting parents use the Here Comes the Bus app to help track their child's path. And in Framingham, Massachusetts, they've even tried recruiting stay-at-home parents and retirees to help fill their shortage. All efforts to keep the wheels rolling and get the kids to class on time. And part of this is certainly financial. If you're offered a job for $20 an hour at a restaurant or $15 an hour to drive a bus, you can understand how human behavior would take over there, guys. Many school districts have raised their offers by 2 or $3 an hour for bus drivers, maybe even more. Some are offering bonuses of $1,200 up to $2,000 just to onboard more folks. There's also the relaxing of requirements, so you don't necessarily need a perfect immaculate driving record just to get one of these jobs. Back to you guys. Hopefully it works. I think yeah. that's the one thing you don't need to loosen up, though. Let's yeah, keep well, the let's requirements. Keep that one. But they offer, yeah. certainly <laughs> offer them more money. Let's 100%. They're driving our kids. So Absolutely. They're, they're worth whatever they get. Exactly. We agree. All right. Thanks, right. Sam. Well, now to an honor for some all-time greats. Over the weekend, four NBA legends were inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Among them, Miami Heat icon Dwayne Wade. Craig sat down with him to talk about this moment, his legacy, and so much more. Craig, good morning. Good morning, Craig. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to see you on a Monday morning. I mean, D. Wade's legacy on the court, undeniable. Three NBA championships, 13 all-star appearances, Olympic gold medalist. He did it all on the court. In fact, uh, just a few days ago, Pat Riley, another NBA legend, said that Dwayne Wade is undeniably the greatest player in the history of the Miami Heat. So it was not a surprise that at 41 years old, the first time he became eligible for the Hall of Fame, he was inducted. We sat down on Friday to talk to him exclusively ahead of that in induction. Uh, but a lot of folks this morning are, are talking about that moment, his speech on Saturday night, uh, when he pretty much said, it was his dad who was the primary reason he was going into the Hall of Fame. I love you, and I'm thankful for you. I love you too, man. We're in the Hall of Fame, dog. <laughs> wow. That's really cute. Uh, it, you know, it was That's his dad really who put cute. a basketball in his hand. Uh, when he was eight or nine years old, growing up on the south side of Chicago. Um, basketball for him, like a lot of kids at that age, uh, it was an escape. Mm -hmm. It was his way out, his way out of poverty. So he went on and played at Marquette, and he's just been widely regarded as on the court, one of the best guards to ever play the game. And then off the court, he has become, as you know, uh, an advocate, thanks to his daughter, an advocate in the LGBTQ plus space. He's become an entrepreneur as well. He's part owner of the Utah Jazz. But he has also become best known as a fashion icon, especially in the world of sports. We spent some time talking about that part of his legacy as well. And no surprise, it also came from his dad. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur, um, rights advocate, I would say another major part of who you've always been, fashion icon. We've all, you said it. Well, yeah, but you've always prided yourself on being very fashion forward. Fair? Fair. Where does this of style come from? My dad. I'm, I'm just a kid who wanted to be like his dad at the end of the day. Right? I remixed it. You know, yeah. I made it my own. thought it was my own. Yeah. 
Where does this come from? You know, what you see? Like my uncles, they were some Shaw brothers growing up. I was like, oh, okay. I grew up in Chicago. We got a little flair, a little yeah. style. And so, and then from there, it comes from your, your experiences and your travels and, you know, what you're exposed to. And so I've been exposed to things and I'm like, okay, I, now I like that. I didn't know I liked that. Yeah. I said, I would never do that. Now, you know what? I'm sorry that I said that because I'm doing it now. Um, and so it just comes from the experience of life, man. And I like to put on, I like, I like to put on clothes. It makes me feel a certain way. <laughs> Really cool. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, when you when you you look good, you feel good. Yeah. So yeah. D Wade is is very comfortable with that being a part of his legacy. Well oh, deserved. You, and you look good, uh, by the way, Craig. And also, you you he said something in the last hour, which I was kind of surprised. The time he said everything that went through his mind during all this, including when he got that call about the Hall of Fame, including the times he thought about quitting. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't a foregone conclusion for him, uh, Al. He's he's spent some time in the past talking about um, talking about that and 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 perhaps wanting to give up occasionally. But you know, he he has a, a quite the village around him. His wife Gabrielle Union, who we all know, very strong. His mom, who was a pastor in Chicago for a number of years, who since moved out to Los Angeles to be closer to him. His dad. I mean, he's always and he credits that village with really um, not just holding him up, but when he wanted to stop, pushing him, pushing That's him, great. pushing wow. him. That's wow. a gift. Well, thanks for having me. That was great. That, that was, was great. so much. All Thank right. you, Craig. Enjoy the rest of your okay. vacation. Go back to vacation. Enjoy your vacation. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, our series, Grit. He's oh, gone. Oh, 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 hey, oh, Craig, he didn't wait wait till the camera goes on the next shot. Come on. Young Ali just completed the journey of a lifetime. What inspired him to bike across 14 countries at just 17 years old. That's awesome. And then later, all access with the Jonas Brothers, our buddy Jacob Soberoff, an exclusive behind the scenes look at their tour, what the guys do before hitting the stage. He looks like he's I don't, I don't know, know which one is who. Third hour of the day, I'll be right back. <laughs> This morning, we are going to meet a young man with serious grit. He recently completed an incredible journey across two continents on two wheels. So he's here to tell us all about it. But first, a little more about his life-changing bike ride. When California native Liam Gardner finished high school in 2021, he had big post-graduation plans. He wasn't starting a new job or headed off to college. Instead, he planned to bike all the way from Alaska to Argentina. Chasing freedom and adventure, Liam began his journey down the Pan American Highway in August of 2021. Over the course of the next 527 days, he logged nearly 20,000 miles through 14 countries. I am currently now in Mexico. Right now I'm in Cotopaxi in Ecuador. Guess where I am, Lima. Along the way, he met friends. Three, two, one, cheese. Camped under the stars and got a firsthand look at the cultures and wildlife of North, Central, and South America. He documented his journey heavily on social media, gaining supporters from around the globe as he biked. To everyone who's ever followed along or helped out, thank you. And while he reached his final destination in Argentina earlier this year, for Liam, the adventure is just beginning. Woo. It's amazing. Now get this, after he finished biking, Liam, as you see here, backpack home to California. He arrived just a few weeks ago and he joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you so much. Hopefully you've gotten some rest. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> Who needs rest? You're still young. So, yeah, so let's ahead. let's back up. Talk about the inspiration and motivation behind this this journey. So Growing up, I always knew I wanted to do some crazy adventure the second I graduated high school. And looking back, I, I know the inspiration. Um, I was d diagnosed with autism when I was younger. And so as you can imagine, I never quite fit in that well in normal life. And the first time I ever felt, well, natural was in nature. Yeah. So. Well, what, what's interesting is I am, I'm picturing my son coming to me and say, at 17 years old, oh, by the way, uh, mom and dad, I, I want to backpack 20,000 miles through two continents. What was your, what was <laughs> yeah. your, your folks' reaction to this? About the same as yours would probably be. <laughs> Absolutely not. You're crazy. You're going to college. Yeah. Um, I think it finally set in for my mom when uh, the bike finally showed up and I had tickets booked. Um, and ever since then, nothing but the most supportive, mm -hmm. amazing experience. I have a really great family at home, so I'm really fortunate. Mm. So there are ways to travel the world. Um, yeah. A bike is probably one of the more challenging ways to travel. <laughs> why, why did you choose that mode of transportation? So I biked for a year and a half and then backpacked for six months so I can speak on a couple different ways of traveling. 100% mm -hmm. the bike is the best way to travel that currently exists. Why? It's just the most thorough, rewarding, available way to travel. You really get to see every inch of a place, like a local. Um, it's just truly amazing. Well, we saw the beautiful parts, the people you were able to meet. I mean, it seems like a, a movie or a book or something like that. But what was probably one of the most challenging parts, maybe something that we didn't see that made you want to, at one time, give up? So I, I'll save the crazy details for the book. Oh, but okay. I, long story short, I got robbed five times. <gasps> oh, and, wow. Yeah, a lot. And I had a really bad accident where I almost died in Colombia, and I had to get a lot of surgery after that. Um, so as, my mom begged me to come home after that and multiple other times, basically every month. Did you think um, about ever quitting? It just wasn't an option for me. I, mm. While I was there, I don't care if I lost an arm or a leg or if I died in the process, it didn't seem possible for me to quit once I had started. Mm. It was a certainty. Wow. So, so what's the best lesson you've learned that you've come away with from this, Liam? I think the most important thing that I learned is just um, it's important to have faith in yourself and in the planet. Mm. Um, I really believe that everyone is capable of the most amazing things and it was proven to me on my trip mm -hmm. when I met people of all backgrounds and races and religions and everything doing even crazier trips than mine mm. you know so I really just want people to be confident and take the first step and do something yeah. great I love wow. that so That's what is terrific. next for you ah. so I documented the whole trip um, and right now this next year I'm planning to make a video series about the whole thing oh, as well as you. write my book yeah so oh, keep an eye out for that this next year but more you. importantly the next trip which is big reveal Europe to Asia by bike Wow. Um, wow. Portugal to Singapore. And oh I'm going to be doing that with my amazing partner. And that'll take about two years again. Yeah. So very, cool. very looking Take your time and wow. be yeah. careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Liam, Hopefully. thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you're here to tell the story. Yes. Thank, thank you. Guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Coming up next, the Jonas Brothers are back. They kicked off their world tour this weekend. And we have an exclusive look behind the scenes at how it all came together. Then later, revamp your beauty routine with the right way to take care of your face from start to finish. Mm. We've got the experts here. We'll be right back.
The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. Back now with a behind the scenes look of one of the biggest concerts of the year with one of the newest Jonas Brothers. <laughs> the Jonas Brothers kicking off their world tour over the weekend and our buddy now Sobro. Sobro. Jacob Sobro was an honorary Jonas brother for the day, I, I think forever now. You can call yeah, me I Jacob so. Jonas. There okay. you go. Jonas. 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 There you go. It it works for me. Uh, what's up everybody? The brothers launched their massive world tour with two epic performances right here at Yankee Stadium. This morning we have an exclusive look at how this incredible, truly incredible production comes together. Guys, this is unbelievable. I am going backstage with the Jonas Brothers. This is the past. They claim it's real. This is where they're kicking off their world tour at Yankee Stadium and they invited me to join them for the day. I wanna know who's in your head, stealing your heart while I'm still bleeding. Kevin, Joe, Nick. Together, the Jonas Brothers. They've been churning out hits for two decades. He said, I miss you the year 3000. And they are still at the top of the charts. 20 million albums, more than 13 billion streams, and this year, a new release, The Album. Now they're kicking off their massive world tour at New York's Yankee Stadium. To be lifelong Yankee fans opening your world tour at Yankee Stadium. You saw our reaction when we walked up, we're like, Whoa, this view is crazy. Um, and it's for Yankees, not even the stage. This is just a dream come true. Last time you guys did this, you were not all husbands and dads. Now you are. Yeah. Yes. How's it feel? Uh, pretty rewarding to get to experience, uh, you know, moments like this with the people you love. Uh, it, it sort of um, makes every moment of the, the grind um, throughout the course of the career and even kind of leading up to this tour feel worth it. What, what's the goal for you guys? This is a lot of time and energy and effort that you guys don't have to commit. We genuinely love the work that we do together, but we also understand how rare it is to get to, to do something like this with family. This is a celebration of a walk with our fans, with our music, um, and, and the love that we have that we get to do this together. And there's so much more to come. And I think that that's what this is. It's not just a look back. It's a look about where we are right now and where we're going. Each of the brothers took me on a personal behind the scenes tour. This is my dressing room. This is, and you did, this is amazing. First, a look inside Joe's dressing room. I, I just got these for my brothers. I saw these on Instagram. I was obsessed with it. It's this little like calming magnetic thing. I've got a bunch of toys and trinkets. I think it's healthy to remind myself like to have fun on and off stage. My tour continued with Nick. This is kind of where all the magic happens. Who showed me the soundboard. You know, we have an amazing team, uh, amazing crew on this tour. They kind of bring the, the dream to life. And the biggest part of that is making sure it sounds right, obviously. And when you fill a stadium with 50,000 plus people, uh, there's a lot of things happening all at once. The so it sounds like a real maestro sitting on this board. Yeah. And Kevin gave me a peek at all of his instruments for the show. Oh, wow. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> this is crazy. It's a lot, a lot of stuff. But this is the guitar that I played on almost every single song. Maybe I won't, yeah, I won't touch it. Play, you can grab it. <laughs> nah, you don't um, want me to play it. Backstage with the band, I got a glimpse at life on the road. A lot of this stuff that you're seeing to the right and left of you are from previous tours. We just put them in storage units, so we find my armchairs. Quite funny They're things. Literally, this is just your stuff from last. Yeah, these are Kevin's chips from like 30 years ago. <laughs> but this is where we'll gather before the show, and we have a moment where we kind of huddle up and, yeah. and have just a, a beat between just the three of us to kind of get right mentally. Then we say this thing, which a literal you know, huddle, a literal huddle. Yeah. Like this. And you. Okay, yeah, like and a, you say? Like football huddle. Yeah. Uh, I say every note matters. I say every person matters. Well, I say what we do matters. And then we go, let's get it. So that means you Has anybody what? ever been in the middle of that before? No. Uh, no. no You're now a Jonas Brothers. Yeah. And when the actual Jonas Brothers took the stage later that evening. They brought down the house. Stop. Really, right those in. are my those are my best friends. They're guys. literally those are the best a friends. lot of good air. Um, I do have a special special announcement. The guys kept saying, you know, this is special to them. They grew up at Yankee Stadium. They're from New Jersey. Check this out. They are adding another hometown show. The Jonas Ooh. Brothers. Write this down, everybody. Are playing the Prudential Center in ah, New Jersey okay. in December. So if you missed the shows this weekend, you got another chance. Tickets for that show go on sale Wednesday. 
Maybe we can. Wow. And didn't you say it, in 2008 they had a chance to play Yankee Stadium? Isn't that wild? No. They were too nervous that they couldn't sell out wow. Yankee Stadium in 2008, so they passed. Wow. And now I said, were you nervous this time? They were like, no, no, no. I mean, we're good. Selling at Yankee Stadium is no joke. It's, it's like 100,000 people over two days yeah, that went to crazy. see the stadium. It's, wow. it's a real, amazing. real accomplishment. Thanks, Thank you, that so was awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe Bros. Jonas Brothers, excuse me. <laughs> I love you. All right. Up next, an about face in Today Beauty, the right way to take care of your face. We're going to show you from washing to moisturizing. We'll have you all set, dewy, and fresh and all the good things. All right. And then later, Studio 1A is going to the dogs. We have the adorable stars of the new comedy, Strays, and their lead trainer with us this morning. We'll be right back. Today, Beauty, we are going back to the basics. We are going to share the right ways to care for your face with a start to finish skincare routine. And of course, here to show us how it's all done is Sarah Eggenberger, the Wonderful. senior editor at large for New Beauty. We love when you're here, Sarah. I love to be here. So, mm -hmm. we're, Chanel and I are raving about this first yeah. game changer when it comes to cleaning, especially this TV makeup off our face. Yes. This is really, really it's good. It's crucial because you do need to have something that's going to emulsify and get everything off your skin. So, when it comes it comes to choosing cleansers, if you have more dry skin, you want to look for things that are going to draw more moisture for the skin. So think about ingredients like hyaluronic acid, sodium hyaluronate is how it's going to read on the ingredient deck. Okay. Also things like glycerin, those are going to be your humectants that are going to pull and add in moisture to the skin. So things like this Elemis cleanser mm -hmm. and CeraVe are great ways to add that moisture to the skin and cleanse. If you have oily skin, now this is where you're going to want to go to your gel cleansers. This is when you use some active ingredients that are going to help to purify the skin, to balance the skin, but you never want to leave feeling tight and dry. That's mm -hmm. the key. You never want that feeling. So the ideal way, especially TV makeup or even if you have oily skin, is to do double cleansing. Double mm -hmm. cleansing. Double cleansing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two cleansers, All right. two steps. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to see okay, here so is you Kennedy take your is, Elemis. Is, yeah. is putting the gel on first? She is. She's taking this Elemis, the beloved Elemis, and this is just going to help to emulsify. It's an oil base, and okay. so the oil is going to attract oil to help to pull everything off your it skin. It helps take the makeup right. off without being so dry. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Oil yeah. attracts oil, so if you take the yes. makeup It's counterintuitive because really I was worried that it would be too oily, but it's great. It's not. And then yeah. you go right after with the gel cleanser. Gel cleansers are your water-based cleansers. Just look at the back of the bottle. If it says mm -hmm. water, it's a water-based cleanser. And then what do you do? Then you follow with your gel cleanser, and that's just going to emulsify everything and lift it all off. Mm -hmm. So doing two gentle cleanses is a better way to purify your skin. Okay. You're also setting the stage for the rest of your skin care. And do that's why washcloth? it's so important. Yep. And then you'll go back in with a washcloth and water uh -huh. to remove it. Is there a and way, in your opinion, that you should wash your face properly? Yeah. So you always want to do small circular motions and then also here's a challenge to wash your face for 60 seconds mm. so just like brushing your teeth you mm -hmm. need to have a certain period of time I same thing that. with washing your face it's gonna help to soften your skin and prep your skin for all the other active ingredients that follow all right let's all right. talk about moisturizers yeah. okay. so after your face is thoroughly cleansed you like to layer don't I you? I do like to layer yeah. but you need to layer appropriately so here's how you're gonna layer you're gonna cleanse first okay. then you're gonna use your serums like the Olay Super Serum this is where all your actives go I've in. learned from doing segments on the third hour I used to not do that right but now yeah. I'm a 
I'm a believer. A believer. In the layering. Such a difference. Yeah. Layering makes a huge difference. Then if you do have breakouts, go with your spa treatment with Epions. And now you're going to use your moisturizer. So you okay. want to use a moisturizer based upon your skin type. Choose your appropriate moisturizer. Okay. I always top it off with your SPF every morning. And you put the evening. SPF on top of the, so you put the serum down, you put your moisturizer on, and then you put the SPF on top of that? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that's all, that's your steps in the morning. Okay. In the evening, you're going to do your exfoliation with like Beauty Stat or your Retinol, which is your cornerstone of any anti-aging program. Okay. But when you put your moisturizer on, it's a great time for some self-care. Okay. And so what you do is when you apply your moisturizer, you're just going to start at the base. You're going to start at your neck mm -hmm. and just do the sweeping motion all up in the neck. Can I be honest? Most of us don't do our neck. Oh. My mom, oh, uh, I went home crucial. a couple years ago and yeah. she's like, ooh, girl. Yeah, the neck, get... even the chest <gasps> decollete. Let's get in there with the right. decollete because that shows so much all increasing right. in aging. Then you're going to go with the jawline. You're going to just pinch the jawline. You pinch you it? a okay. lot of tension in the jawline. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to sweep again. So you want to keep using sweeping motions. Yeah, Again, always go up. Make sure you have enough product. Pressure point on that zygomatics major muscle. We hold a lot of tension there. Look at that. Again, coming back and pinching those pinching. eyebrows. Mm. I mean, we hold so much tension yeah. in the eyes. Go ahead and pinch See, vertically. I need to get somebody to do this for I, me. This. And then that go would be up better. the forehead. Now you want to sweep up the forehead, up to the hairline, because our lines typically go horizontal. Okay. So you want to go opposing direction and just provide that nice moisture, that muscle relaxation. I need this on video so really I can helpful. do it at home when you do it. I know. Yeah. Just We'll do a follow-up video. Sarah, yes. thank you you so should. Much. Sarah, thank you. Of course. All, All right, right, Al, where'd Al, you go? I you didn't even away, notice I left. It was fantastic. <laughs> hey, because I came over here because we got some doggone big stars uh, in Studio 1A. We're going to meet the pups from the hilarious new movie, Strays. Yes! Third hour today. We'll be right. What he said. Third hour today. We'll be right back. <laughs> Now and then you have a rough day, but our next guest will positively oh brighten your day up. Sophie, Elsa, Benny, and Dolan oh. are the stars of the new film, Straight. Wait, I love this so much. <laughs> Sophie takes on the role of Reggie, voiced by Will Ferrell. And when Reggie is abandoned by his owner, he's like, would y'all let me live? Uh, <laughs> he finds a pack of strays to get revenge. Look at this. Hey, losers. Hey, hey bug. Oh, if it isn't a tiny dog who caught the car. I did catch that car. No, everyone knows that's impossible. Yeah, it was parked. Yeah, it parked after I caught. No, there was yeah. no one in the car. No one in the car. Listen, I don't even have to keep this conversation going. What I was trying to do, losers, was introduce you to my new friend, Reggie. He just got dumped. Oh, sorry, mate. Welcome to the club. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it at least mutual? Oh, no. It, it's actually just a game. Reg, I want you to meet Hunter. He's a therapy dog who works in a home for dying humans, which sounds like an okay gig, except that he was trained to be a police dog. You almost made it to the police squad? That's awesome. <laughs> this is so funny. So joining our stars is animal trainer Mark Forbes, who has worked on films like Dr. Doolittle, Cruella, and Lady in the Trump, so he knows his stuff. Good morning to you. Morning. This Good is morning. so much fun. So, so Mark, tell us, all these, these are really the stars of the movie, even Absolutely. though they may have celebrity voices, but they all come from different backgrounds. Tell us about them. Yeah, um, some of them came from breeders. Some, some of the dogs on the show were actual rescue dogs. Um, so they, they all have a backstory, but they all got trained about 
four months before we started shooting. Mm -hmm. That's it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Elsa actually had some training before, but the other three were brand new. I was just about to say, so Elsa is a vet in the game. She's had some training. But how do you get all of the dogs to work well together? Because that doesn't always work. Yeah, that's actually the hardest thing that we do mm -hmm. is to get them. One dog working in a frame is pretty easy, sure. but four dogs working together, ignoring the other trainers, ignoring oh each gosh. other. It, Took a long time. So do they each look at their own trainer, even though it looks like they're all look, talking to each other, obviously, but they each have a person, so to speak? They each have a person, and that's who is behind the dog. Mm -hmm. that that's pretty cool. And their eyes are locked in with that person. Exactly. That's so, so cool. For folks at home, I mean, I have a, a little dog. She's almost 13 now, so I don't know if I could teach an old dog new tricks. But what, what's the advice for folks at home who, you know, want to just teach sure. a couple things? Uh, you can teach an old dog new tricks, um, but it... it it's fairly simple. It takes time. Yeah. There's no substitute for time. So you mm -hmm. spend a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. um, make it as black and white as you can. Okay. Be really consistent with them. And then make it fun. Mm -hmm. um, do short little sessions. Use treats. Mm -hmm. Anything. You can't be too positive. Oh, okay. I love so that. So spend the time. With them. So in a way, it, it's really more about training your owner. The, the yeah. person who owns the dog than the dog itself. A lot of times <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah, the dogs are, are very simple in, in learning. It's getting us it's to mm -hmm. kind of be consistent with yeah. that's the hard part. Let's do some tricks. Okay. Yeah, you're going to do okay. some tricks for us, right? All right. Sophie, you want to start us off? Sophie is chilling Sophie. on this couch. <laughs> okay. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> Sophie. Okay, so Sophie's going to do, what is Sophie going to do? Here. Here Sophie, in the film, she plays a little game with her owner that we can't really mention on the okay. TV. Okay. So, um, <laughs> but this is the end of it where she comes back with the ball that she's chased. Okay. And she drops it for him and then lets him know how excited she is. Okay, let's see. Good. All right. Good. Sophie, stay. Okay. Stay. All right. Out. Out. Good. Aww. Speak, speak, speak. Aww. Speak, speak. Aww. Speak, speak. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Aww, that's really cute. Sophie. That's cute. Circle. Circle. Oh, so cute. All right, let's do another one. Oh, good job, Sophie. Sophie. Yay, Sophie. Yeah. Sophie gets a treat. Yay. All right, okay. so this is Benny, who plays Bug. And Bug is going to show us a little trick that uh, is maybe a little more appropriate to the film. Okay. So, April, just bring him over there. Okay. I love our little, uh -oh. our pretend fire hydrants. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh. May not be pretend. Here. Oh. Come on, come on. Good. Come here. Good. Good boy. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Aww. Okay, I'm gonna just do a short one. Yep. There Good. you go. Okay, hey. now I'm gonna do a little distance there. Stay. Stay. Good. Good, look here. Yes. Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> It's this one here. Hey, okay, Elsa. Come here, Elsa. Elsa. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a part of this one. Oh, guys. cool. All right, I'm ready. Okay, bring Elsa here. Oh, she's so beautiful. Okay. All right, Elsa. Okay, it's like dirty dancing. Elsa. Oh. oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so that much. Was awesome. Thank you. Good well girl. done, Dylan. You, we got a Good treat for girl. you. Thank you. Strays is from Universal Good Pictures, girl. part of our parent company, NBC Aww. Universal, and is out in theaters this Friday. I smell Not like a dirty dancing kids. remake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are clearing out the clutter now with some award winning products to help you get organized. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. So good.
This morning, we are tackling all the clutter that you know it builds up around the house. Apartment Therapy has launched their first ever organization awards. Yes, there please. you go. Charlie Penn is the executive lifestyle director at Apartment Therapy, and she's here with some of the winning products. Good morning hey, to Joe. you. Good morning. Thank morning. you all for having me back. Yes, these products are editor, editor tested, editor okay. approved. Mm -hmm. We thought about every small space organization problem we deal with in I our love homes it. every day, and we're solving them. I like it because they don't take up a lot of space. No, Let's talk so about this, this one. is the 360 rotating makeup that. organizer. Please notice the adjustable trays. It fits oh, your high I foundation, ask that. your little nail that? polishes, like every size. It can hold like over 40, 50 products. Oh, this would be great, great under a vanity. Point. It's like the perfect mix it's of a, a lazy yeah. Susan Woo. and a container. We yes. say yes. Mm. Perfect under a vanity, and you know how much space makeup, space yeah. makeup oh, takes yes, up. Oh, yes, absolutely. So cleaning up the sink area. Yeah, so vanity space is luxury these are the joseph and joseph easy store toothpaste, toothpaste holders Love that. and you can store and you can clean the bottom ah, clean that's the a good your, point. yes exactly you can store your material your mechanical too fresh i love and that. everything oh because you can use the cord yep sorry and they're only love like it. from 12 bucks that's pretty cool yeah it's great price that's great awesome. colors and it takes up no space and holds everything look at all that stuff in there that's that is great. Yeah. what about oh look at these okay, okay so is that, are these for lashes Ooh. yes these have labels these are my favorite so when you're traveling and you don't want to pack too much or yeah, have to throw it away, it's look at this. They're magnetic. You can store. Oh, they're TSA compliant. You can put your liquids, your shampoos, your so conditioners. So they won't leak? Ah, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Look indestructible. You can label them Earrings, with tiles. Rings. Rings. Oh, I see. Look mean they're the magnetic together. They're magnetic. They come in sets of six. These are That's the cadence cute. capsules. They are so look at that. convenient. We got some Benadryl in there. I want Everything. one of these carts. Okay. Oh. So these carts are so popular. These are the IKEA Rascog carts. They are the best. They won for best utility. Oh, Cards, oh I like that it rolls. Store anything. Arts and crafts. Yeah. yeah. Cleaning supplies. You name it. Just it keeps it organized. Blanket, and you can roll them into any room. They come in two great colors. Mm -hmm. Everyone adores these. I love that. Let's this get labeling. Okay. okay. This is our best practical gift. Oh, look at this. Everyone you in your life you want to get organized. Look, I printed labels That's off so of you guys. Cool. You can create, preview, and print right from this Brother P Touch label maker. Oh. Is it easy to do? I've got this one. It's really? Fast. You know. Oh. Seconds. I've been labeling everything. And everything. you can get creative. I just labeled my spice You can door. get creative. And it's a little sticky under there? Yes. You can stick it right on. You can play Are with the fonts the and the styles. That yeah. you Different, different ink, colors and blank, inks, formats. Oh, different awesome. fonts within there. It's yes. really terrific. It's like the perfect gift. <laughs> Put it on the side of your fridge. Okay. Nice oh, so so I personally use this at home. I love what it so much. What a great idea. It's a magnetic fridge organizer. Mm. It's the most asked about item in my kitchen. It holds and up it to 45 pounds. All. Does it hold it? Yes, it hasn't moved. I'm working How on it the know? max. How do it know? At home. Know? Look at that. You with guys have hooks towels. for all of your appliances, your spices. You can label them with the Brother Beast label maker. It holds your oils, your paper towels. And it's magnetic. Up, everything. Oh, this is a win. Oh, it's a win-win. Win. Thank you These so much, These are great. Thank you so much. I love That's that. If you winner, want to see more winners from Apartment Therapy's Organization Awards, just head to today.com slash shop. These are good ones. So we'll awesome. be right back. Thank you. I love this. a new episode of health and wellness today on our streaming channel today all day we'll be talking all things summer from safety to skin care make sure you catch it this morning at 10 a.m on today.com slash all day or stream it on peacock it's a game changer <laughs> and tomorrow on the third hour we're going to be cooking up a seafood feast in today's food yum we'll show you how to do it coming up on hoda and jenna tracy morgan has a sneak peek of his new comedy special we will see you tomorrow have a fantastic day bye-bye what was that what was that
Today we're kicking off the week with the hilarious Tracy Morgan. He's got a sneak peek of his new comedy special. And then Jenna and I are going to try out some fun viral hacks to see if they actually work. And we're talking about Haley Bieber's surprise revelation that has stunned the internet. It's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Right now. Hey everybody, good to see you. Welcome. It is August the 14th. You know what else it is? The month of August. It is welcome back to Hoda Day. Hey girl, how are you? I'm so happy you're home. It's so good to see you. How was your birthday? First of all, how was Poppy's? Poppy's birthday was yesterday. Yes. It was excellent. We Wish celebrated. You did. Um, oh, okay. Look at Pop in rare form. That's Poppy in a picture. That's she what she does. So, Hat, sunglasses. She's always the life of the oh party. Oh my God, look at her. She's hilarious. What is that? What's Those she are eating? beans and cheese. Okay, of her course. Favorite <laughs> Breakfast. <food> groups. <gasps> um, she's the best. She's she's so. so wait, how old did she, she turns eight. eight? She's full of spirit. Oh, I she love is Poppy. so much fun. And we were in Maine with my parents. Oh we got my. to celebrate <gasps> together. Oh. We had an ice cream truck come. Wait, what? And then I did a little sneaky thing. What? Where they wanted multiple ice creams, but then they jumped in the pool and I said to the ice cream truck, you can go. And then they got real mad. Wait, you let the truck go? After one ice cream each. Yeah, that should be. That's okay. Okay. They're mad. Anyway. Because it's special day. I know. Birthday That's everything was like, but it's Poppy's birthday. <laughs> We can stay up till way, midnight. It's exactly, Poppy's birthday. Exactly. Um, but let's go back to your birthday. Oh, my birthday, yes. I had a great birthday celebration. I had my mom, my sister, my brother, uh, my nieces, my sister-in-law. Everybody came. We had cakes and parties, and we celebrated, and it was great. And, and by you the way, slept on an air mattress. We all There were air mattresses and people stepping over people <laughs> and not enough towels. And nobody all knows. All the things. There's no food. The usual. <laughs> But here's the great thing, what I realized is I turned 59 this year, and I am so happy to be 59 this year. I feel so good about it. If you're worried about aging, and I know that aging's a thing, 59 is amazing. It's an amazing year. And when I woke up and I thought about it, I was like, I closed my eyes, and I imagined and pictured what I have around me. And I was thinking to myself, I'm 59 years old. I have two incredible kids. I've got my mom here and my sister Ugh. and my brother and my nieces and my sister-in-law. And I kept thinking to myself, like, I'm smiling. I'm closing my eyes and I'm smiling. And if you do that, you know that it's like there's a lot of good things ahead. Yes. Like, I feel like this year's going to be fantastic. I'm not like, ooh, how old are you? Oh, God. <laughs> Haley was screaming, my mom's 59. I was like, yes, I am. Yes. I am. I am, and I'm so glad that I get to be this. And I was thinking about how important it is to not, like, just just to think about your life in, in like, daily instead of down the road. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's what I've been doing Well, lately. instead of being filled with fear of yes. aging, you're with Who the, cares? the awesomeness of it. Look, life is a blink. Turn around, watch what's happening, watch the news. You, you, you're here and then you're like, life is like that. So you have to be in it. You can't be regretting. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, what if I were 80 years old and God said to me, you get to be 59 one more time, go back. That's what it would feel like, like to be in this amazing situation. So as, and sometimes I close my eyes and I picture my life, like what do I, how do I see myself in my 60s? And I actually feel so full. I, act, I can see what my 60s are going to feel like. And I like that feeling. And I want to think, like, what's my life going to be ahead? I don't want to sit here and say, oh, God, oh, uh, pull. Who cares, <laughs> man? Who cares? I about needed all this that? pep talk today. Yes. It, yes, because 59 is glorious. Yes. Glorious, glorious. Thank you. Oh my gosh, 59. and I cannot wait till we celebrate 60, but I don't want to rush 59 by. 59's amazing. We're going to slow it. We're going to slow it. I'm slow excited it. about all the days, yes. all the birthdays. I'm not, oh, God, well, how old are you? Uh, no. 
Say it. Oh my Say gosh, it. I'm so happy. Say it. Say it. And Poppy is well, eight. I know. And unfortunately, yes. last night when Poppy turned eight, we were also trying to teach her the history of World War II. So I okay. slept in Puppy's room because it's a lot to take on. What happened? Why, why the teaching? Well, this? we're we're gonna go to Normandy, oh. France. So I was trying to teach her the history. To understand what she's and gonna be saying. Unfortunately, yeah. that was a lot for an eight-year-old, particularly on her birthday. And so I slept with Puppy in her room with a big nightlight right there in the face. <gasps> and I was trying to be you and be like, how lucky am I <laughs> to live this moment? When I'm 90, I'm gonna miss sleeping in this tiny twin bed with a squishmallow right next to my face. <laughs> and but you and it was it. okay, yeah, you know? I know. But I need this. I, I needed you. Because I, I think some days are good and some days aren't. You just got to power through. Yeah, the ones just that drink great. a lot of coffee. <gasps> okay, right. um, Haley Bieber. Yeah. she has the internet talking. Um, she took to Instagram this weekend and she admitted she is currently watching all of Sex in the City for the first time ever. Yep. Which makes sense because she she's was young. young. She like missed she, it. Of course, she didn't see it. That would be like me trying to teach Poppy about Sex in the City. Okay, please stop. <laughs> You're rushing everything. You need to slow, slow down. Eight-year-old <laughs> doesn't need to know it all. Okay, so her post has 10,000 comments and 1.8 million likes. With people shocked, she's never seen it before. But again, if we do the math, I'm sure she was too young to watch she it the first time. She was too young. She shouldn't have been watching it. No. But it is kind of interesting when something is like a cultural touchstone and to have never seen totally. it. Totally. Which... Oh. Oh, yeah, remember? It was all so good. Um, we I, can admit it. Yes, we, should we just say it? Yeah. One, two, two three. three. Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> We've never seen it. And we don't care to. I'm not interested. I know that's going to hurt people's feelings, people that Luke, are... are you my father? I mean, no. I know all the Yo terms. Yoda. Yoda. And you know what? We have Star Wars I... people on the show. Yes. Oh, and God. And they look at us with, like, eye rolls. Once, one Halloween, I dressed up as Yoda, and I didn't even... I wasn't even in no, at all. No, you just knew that Yoda rhymed with, with Hoda. Hoda. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. But we don't care. I know, but it's it can be offensive to it, oh, see Davy's Davey even just, offended. I like, I, like Star Wars. I know, but just because you like it doesn't mean we have to watch it, yeah. right? I know. He says he knows. It's but uh, but I know. <laughs> I know. But it is one of those things that there are so many pop culture references in oh, yeah. life. And now there's the you know? new show. But see they keep having new ones. With what, the baby one. <laughs> Isn't there a baby? <laughs> baby Yoda. Isn't there a new Apparently. show that like little and kids? And everyone's so excited about what's it called? The Galac no. Uh -huh. Gal Glorium. Glorium. Delorious. <laughs> no, what's Delirium. it called? <laughs> The Mandalorian. Mandalorian! See? Yeah. We were close. Delirious, DeLorean. We but guess it. what's going to happen? We're never going to be Haley Bieber where we go back to watch all of them. No. No, at least she's curious. Yeah. And that's good. Good for all you. All right, let's talk about our girl, Hannah Waddingham. Hannah Waddingham is, you know, one of the stars of Ted Lasso. Yes. We adore her. She plays the owner. We've had her Rebecca. on the show. Yeah, she's amazing. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. and she. But she said she's always struggled with her height. Yeah, she's 5'11". She says she's lost roles because as a young actress, you want to be, or I think probably not she didn't want to be, but the casting people wanted her to be taller than the leading men. So she didn't get a bunch of roles until Ted Lasso came around yeah. because Jason Sudeikis said he didn't care. He didn't care if she wore four-inch heels and towered over him. Yes. And good. And by the way, the show is a huge success. Yes. And also, she owns her power. Yes. We love that she's tall. She walks in a room and she owns it. And that's who she plays. Yes. Right? And also, I think the idea of every, you know, look, a lot of leading men are small. That's very true. Don't you think? Yes. <laughs> like, for example, I'm watching the bear now which rainy yes, recommended right i find that chef to be very attractive yes. but then i noticed how tall that he probably would come up to my navel <laughs> <laughs> and short. so in rea you like him on the show but then in reality i mean tom cruise is tom shorter cruise is shorter sylvester Stallone. there's a lot of people who aren't very tall who play it's funny how that doesn't prevent a man totally. from taking a leading man role if you're not tall but then the women can be too tall See? What is this about? What is this so about? So maybe it isn't Hannah's issue. Maybe, maybe it's, it's the men's <laughs> issue. All right. right. Are we ready for? Can't wait for that. Yes, we are. All right. If you're in the mood for a summer movie, we got one. Okay. This is Adam Sandler. Yeah. He mm -hmm. stars alongside his real life daughters. Okay. And a film that is called 
You were so not invited to my bat mitzvah. <laughs> okay, should we watch it? Let's see yeah. the trailer. One day, Andy Goldbar will be mine, and you will have a cool boyfriend too, and then we'll have a joining loss in Tribeca in Taylor Swift's building. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can you just let me explain, please? No, no let me explain to you. We are no longer friends. I have tried to apologize. When is it enough? No, it's enough. It's too late. Dad, just talk to her, don't yell. Gabby! You're a jerk and you won't let me have a mojito bar. That's why we fought the Nazis. Is this a bad time? So you can have a mojito bar. <gasps> okay, first of all, Adam Sandler's real life daughters are in that. That I think that was. Yes. Th yes. Those, yes. those. Which two? Were they two of them in there? Yes. 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 We don't know which the two. The very first one and then the very last one. <laughs> I, I hope he put out some new music for it though. You know he does. Did he? I don't know, but Let's boy, that so. looks really good. It looks really cute. All right, coming up next, we love a good hack. So we're going to try some out. Okay, we're going to find out oh, what really works. Of course. Y'all know true. who loves a hack. Hoda's back, and so are the oh, hacks. Oh, my God. Right Wait, after what this. Are we doing here? No, no. Okay, we found some hacks that are going viral, so we're going to put them to the test in the latest edition of Can Hoda and Jenna Hack, Hack it? it? All right. Okay, so here we go. First, we're going to see a video, and then we're going to see if they work or try it ourselves. Okay, this is about coring an apple. Let's take a look. We've been peeling apples wrong. Take your wine opener, press the corkscrew firmly down into the apple, then voila, perfectly peeled apple. You're welcome. Okay, okay, first of all, that was not real. You know why? The bottom part was like lopped off. It didn't have, let's okay, try it. Okay, you were never the same. No, and I, I love a hack. Because I actually think this one looks like one I would do. Okay, you go. These are two, these apples are huge. But how do you? You just twist it. But how did it go down? Now do you Keep twisting, okay. keep twisting, oh, keep, keep twisting. Going. I was all the way down there. No. You need a little apple. No, this does not work. No. No, no, no. Mm. Wait, hang on. Can you flip it over? Okay. Wait, I think I got some apple here. Did you get all the apple? No, I did. Because how is it so sharp? No. That's what I want to no. know. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, I think I have it. Hold on. No, you don't. No, I don't. You don't. You don't. See, you just get, no. Okay, so unless it's a tiny crab apple, it's probably not going to work. <laughs> okay. okay. Next hack. This will help you pour soda into a glass. Without it being all foamy? Okay, let's watch. Ever since learning how to properly pour soda into a cup, I no longer can pour soda regularly anymore. Because at this point, now all you have to do is adjust this to the middle and tip this upside down. And it pours it perfectly. There's no overfizz, there's no overflow. This doesn't touch the can, and it empties out the cup completely. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's the best thing ever. Okay, I like that hack. Okay. Okay, so, but you got to leave it pointed up. Okay. Don't, yeah. Now, how did he do it? He went like, he went like oh, no, he went like... He went like that. Watch out, watch out! 
What happened to it doesn't over fizz, it doesn't overflow. Okay, Maybe guys, you need here's the cup. way we just did it, and here's the way we normally do it. Okay, but see, look at your fizz and overflow. Well, let's see. Is it a lot more? No. It's not. It took similar time. I don't know that we need hacks for everything. I think we've Wait. gone overboard. Well, you were about to go overboard on this one. This is a grape <laughs> hack. You know how exhausting it is to do this? Pull the grape it's off It's so the hard I'm to tired. take a gr grape so, off a stem. How is he going to do it? Let's watch. Put it on a towel, wrap it up, and then roll it back and forth. Maybe not that violent. Five or wine. Okay, I just want to say something before we do it. You guys, look how easy it is to take a grape off of the stem. Come on, come on, girl. Let's it's do so it. Lay girl. it down. Massage. What? Okay, we're massaging it. I feel well, like this, this way, is no. unnecessary. <laughs> Wait, I think you have to roll it up, he said. Yeah. Okay, you know don't what, worry, you know I'm just crushing is? some no, of the you grapes. Know the story Look at you know what the story is? He, you don't have to touch every grape if it's an hors d'oeuvre. See? That's why you do okay, it. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay. I think nope, it did. they're still perfectly <laughs> on. Ooh, you made two of them nasty raisins. <laughs> All right, it doesn't work. All right, guys. Wow, that was zero out of three. By the way, these are great grapes, aren't they? They're really good. Coming up next, y'all, he is one of the funniest guys in show business. We're so excited. Tracy Morgan's here. He's got here. a new comedy special. He's going to open up about his dating life. We'll oh. ask him about it after this. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Hey, buddy, it's today. Hey, like I won the, the lottery. lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just yeah. getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. Tracy Morgan is one of Hollywood's funniest entertainers because he, by the way, is completely 100% unfiltered. And that's exactly what you can expect in his new Max comedy special called Tracy Morgan, Taking It Too Far, where no topics are off limits, including his dating life. Take a look. I gotta let my ladies know that I'm dating again. My Tinder profile is a Walmart truck dropping off a bag of money on my front lawn. Y'all see me dancing in my drawers in my kitchen on TikTok? All that Walmart money is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Hi, Trace. How hey, are, you? are you? How you doing, Look baby? at you. you. It seems like you're single and ready to mingle. What's going no, on no. here? Actually, my my daughter is the lady of my life right now. Yeah. I, she needs me more than anybody in the world. Mm. So I just take my time out to show my daughter my my gratitude, my compassion, oh. and my empathy. That, those are your three ways of, of helping raise her. Tell us what you do specifically. Absolutely. You just said yeah. something that was beautiful before yeah. this, before you came on. Well, I, I show, whenever I give out food back in my old neighborhoods, all around New York City, I do it four times a year. I give out food, old coats, and toys to the kids. Mm -hmm. And I take her with me because I want her to see what being an empath is. 
Mm. Feeling sorry for others, helping others, because COVID did a number on all of us. Yeah. A lot of people lost their jobs, and they need us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to be there. Mm -hmm. I want to be more than just funny. Yeah. I want to yeah. be more than just that's funny. That's, a, that's an interesting thing to say. I want to take my moment. prestige, and I want to do something for my community with it. Was yeah. that, did you, when did that shift, or have you always been like that? Was I've always been like that. My dad was like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My dad was incredible. My dad fought in Vietnam. Mm. My mom's there. She, but my dad, he's fought in Vietnam, and he was a great man. He uh -huh. was, he had more talent in his one pinky than I got my whole body. <laughs> so I'm just mimicking my dad when it comes to my children and life. I think that's, I mean, I feel like people see you, and if they, they see you and they describe you as funny, but the depth that you have yeah. just been showing in the last in the last few days. I lost my dad early. I lost my dad when I was 19 to AIDS. My dad went to Vietnam, fought for this country, and came back hooked on drugs. Mm. Why? He didn't go to Vietnam a drug addict, but he came, came back, back that way. Yeah. Why do you think, you, you talked about where you grew up, Mm -hmm. Why do you, in the projects, why do you think that you're here and the friends of yours uh, are not? The choices that I made. We get two things in life, chances and choices. You have to put more value on your choices because that's going to determine the outcome of your life. Mm -hmm. That's why we sitting here. Yeah. Because of the choices. You think about the choices you made in those pivotal moments. Yeah. When I was 13, I ran away from home. Yeah. I got tired of being beat on. That was a life-changing moment. Yeah. And I never looked back. And it was a choice. Because some people yeah. wait for a chance. They wait to win no. the lottery. They wait for someone or to come to knocking on their door. Or to discover them. I don't want that. No. I'm going to make choices. So what? So we ran Empowerment. Away. Yeah. When you ran away from home, how yeah. did that change the trajectory of your life? I slept on the A train for two nights by myself as a baby. Yeah. And that's why I'm close to God. Because huh. anything could have happened to me. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah, you're here. Oh my gosh. And that must that same strength, you know, we've talked with you a lot after your accident. Yeah. But that same strength is what probably got you. I chose you. to fight. People mm -hmm. just don't come out of comas. Mm -hmm. People just don't there are people in comas for 30 years now. Mm -hmm. You see, I got grades in my eyebrows. They weren't there before the accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It took all my might. My daughter was 10 months old. Mm -hmm. It took all my might. Whatever you do something in life, you do it all your might. Because mm -hmm. anything done by hands is never done right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do it with all your might. All this stuff that you've been talking about has figured out a way into your comedy act, which <laughs> I find awesome. Like you've taken those heavy subjects yes. and somehow made us laugh with that. Is that God, God bless me with a sense of humor. That's the highest form of intelligence on the planet. Yeah. A, a scientist from NASA could send a rocket out <laughs> into space, but I could make you laugh. <laughs> Think about that. When was, do you remember the first time and you... That's, the most thing that any woman loves in a man. It's yes. true. It's it's funny. Funny. It's true. Yes. It's true because we ask a lot, what yeah. do you want in a man? And yeah. everybody says somebody Humor. that can make me laugh. Yeah. So you guys better be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you but when, do you remember when you first made some that feeling of making somebody laugh for high the school. first time? Yeah. High school. I had a rough childhood growing up. When I got to high school, around my peers, on the look in the locker room on a football team and all that. Just me and my boy Leroy, Leroy <laughs> Williams, snapping on each other. I mean, the whole school would cut class just to come in here and snap. Watch you guys, huh? And then it became a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on in life, it became a business. So I'm just doing what I did in high school, being me. Who was the I, person who helped you? Everyone needs a helping hand to say, you're the guy. I want to try. Who's the one who gave me a shot? Yeah, yeah. who gave you a Martin shot? Martin Lawrence, Martin Lauren Lawrence. Michaels, yeah. Tina Fey. All of those, Miss Brown, yeah. she was the very first person. And the very first person to discover my funny was this guy. He was security at Uptown Comedy Club. His name was Rock. Yeah. When I was, I, I walked in the club and I seen Ale Flex Alexander on stage and I was going to go in. And Miss Brown said, uh-uh, baby, it's $12 to get here. And I had no money. <laughs> so when I was about to walk out, Rock said, yo, you funny? I said, yeah, I'm funny. He said, you look funny. Come to the <laughs> workshop this Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And from there... Whoa! Wow. Monteria Ivy. Robin Harris had just passed away and they called me Baby Robin. Oh, oh my God. How gosh. amazing is that? Oh, what a great guy. What when I look at my life, yeah. it's amazing. You have an amazing life. Because you've made all these choices, too, yeah. right? It choices. Choices. I grew up in Brooklyn. Best star, do a die. Take the girl, kill a guy. That's where I grew up. Yeah. And a lot of my friends are statistics. Yeah. Me and Jay Z come from right across the street from us. Biggie Small live right down the block. Yeah. So I had I had I had elders in my life that showed me the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That really guided me. Yeah. And I have to give them credit. My mom, my uncles, 
My grandparents, I was raised by both sets of grandparents that lived right in the same building on top of each other. Yeah. One lived 12 in, one lived 14 in. <laughs> so I had all of that in my life. Yeah. So I would never feel abandoned. Wow. Because I had all those people raise me. Wow. Well, Tracy, we're so we happy you. you're here. Well, don't leave. Yeah, he's we not have, going We anywhere. have another segment with you. Is yeah. that right? Can okay, you stick yes, around? Ma'am, I'm here. He's going to weigh in on some hot topics. We can't wait right after this. <laughs> with actor and comedian Tracy Morgan, who's about to lay down the law in our series. All, All rise, rise for, for Judge, Judge Tracy. Tracy. All right, Tracy, we're going to give you a buzzy topic, <laughs> and then you're going to give us your take. Hit the gavel when you get it. All right, first yep. up, fans recently saw that Harry Styles may have had his former girlfriend, Olivia Wilde's name, tattooed on his leg. So oh. what do you think about getting your partner's name tattooed on your leg <laughs> or anywhere? A ain't nothing happening. No, why is that a no? Why? I would have to put a book on my body. <laughs> a book? That many? How many names? Too many names. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's good. It's summertime. A lot of people are going camping. Yeah. How do you feel about camping in the wilderness? Ain't going to happen. I'm going to project. <laughs> you never do it? A tent to sleep nope. in No, there was no woods and no bears. There was one bear in the project, and his name was Greg. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay, here we go. In an interview with Drake, it went viral recently because Drake was doing the interview while he was snuggled up in bed. How would you feel about getting interviewed in bed? He was lit. They were like, he was laying, in laying in bed with a mic. Ain't nothing happening. <laughs> okay, why not? You're in bed with me, you're getting pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good on an interview. <laughs> not good on an Just interview. told you I want babies. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> we all love a tropical vacation. How do you feel about swimming with dolphins? Dolphins? <laughs> like I dolphins. said, ain't nothing happening. Why is nothing happening, I'm getting in the water with a dolphin, dolphin getting pregnant. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. 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 Here, Here we, we go. go. All right. The first mother-daughter duo just <laughs> launched into space on the Virgin Galactic last Thursday. How would you feel about going into space? Would you ever get on one of those rockets? No. Nope. Ain't nothing happening. <laughs> Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing up there. All the action is down here. <laughs> you ever been to Times Square? That's where the action is. Um, OK, we have to get up early for the show. How do you feel about getting up early to start your day? Ain't nothing happening. <laughs> What time do you get up? 12. No, you no, do you're not. Here right yes, now. I do. You really do? Today I rolled the dice. Yeah. <laughs> um, wait, so you really get up at noon? No. I get up at 7 every morning. Yeah. And I'm in the gym at 10. Yeah. And then I go back to sleep. Yeah. Well, because you. my life. By the way, you've been working on your body and on your health. No, you... that's Ozempic. <laughs> That's you're, how this week got lost. You're not, are you really on Ozempic? Ozempic. <laughs> no, we you're not. A, uh, we ain't got a, one of those papers to get the, the you get, what, you get prescription? medicine? Yeah. Prescription. No, we ain't got a prescription, <laughs> and I got Ozempic. No, you did you really not. I ain't letting it go. You're not even for you, Jim. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> It's like hijacking a plane. There's always some dude that wants to, when the plane, when the pilot have a heart attack or something, there's always some dude that's going to land the plane. Yeah. He's talking to the dude in the tower. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we're going to help you land this big baby, Jim. Yeah. 
<laughs> wait, <laughs> Jim. Uh, wait, are you really on Ozempic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I you take look, Ozempic. You look great. Every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Trace. All right. Cuts my appetite in half. Wow. Well, you look good, Trace. I only eat half a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Tracy's oh, my God. Tracy, special. you're hilarious. Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Morgan. Taking it too far. It yeah. streams this Sunday, this Thursday, y'all, on Max. All right. Coming up next, Jenna's book <laughs> shop of goodies inspired by this month's pick. Summer Sisters, of course, coming up after this. Come on, Tracy. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Boom. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. And that's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. All right. If you've been reading me along with Jenna's uh, book club, the latest club pick, Summer Sisters, you're going to love today's bookshop. Okay, so Judy Bloom yeah. first released Summer Sisters in 1998. It's about two friends who spend every summer together as teens. It's a beautiful book about class and friendship, sisterhood. Mm -hmm. So I picked out some, some things in our bookstore that are really inspired by this novel, but also Judy herself, okay. who is the queen. Yes. So y'all, you can shop by scanning that QR code. Okay, so what do we got first? First up is this essential Judy Bloom box set. <gasps> you need to take this home. By the way, it's a beautiful. This uh, is for way. for Haley. Okay. It's such a good gift. It includes seven of her classic novels. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret Blubber, Deanie, Iggy's House. It's not the end of the world. Then again, maybe I won't. Starring Sally. J. Friedman as herself. Okay. okay that's, um, and I love the packaging. And Gorgeous. It's, a, it's $49. So it's like, it would be a beautiful, beautiful love birthday it. gift. Love it. Pretty awesome. Okay. Perfect. Okay. The next is this little, um, like a trinket, trinket dish. Trinket dish. And it's really for the sisterhood. Again, this is about sisterhood, this book. It's mm. about friendship. It's yeah. about the people that know you better mm -hmm, than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is a little gift that you can I give them. I love that. Some of them say, I love that you're my friend. Some I say that, that I love you. that you're, you're my, my sister. sister. So uh, they are from Natural Life in Ponte Verde Beach, Florida. They're yeah. $12. You just have to go to naturallife.com. Yeah, that's a great price point, too. Cute place to put it's your keys. It's a cute little anything. gift. Love it. Okay, I love these water bottles and um, oh, they feel good. And cups. This is Gray Malin and Corksicle collab. Gray Malin is oh. a photographer who I've actually flown with. He takes all of his pictures from helicopters. Wait, what? So that you get these really cool aerial beach scenes that really only seen from above. And, uh, and Summer Sisters takes place on the beach. And by the way, Corksicle is such a good brand. Yes. That they're great, great like cups. Like they're, they'll, yes. everything will stay cold yes. or hot. The wine yeah. glasses are thirty four ninety five. The canteen is for thirty nine ninety five. Love it. Love it. Com. Oh, come on. A beach uh, blanket. A beach, big beach towel with some classic books, which this is my dream. It features an illustration stack of classic titles, Sense and Sensibility, Little mm -hmm. Women, Weathering Heights, all the great ones, Secret Garden. It's fifty dollars, but Rifle Paper is offering twenty-five percent off this towel and their entire book club collection. 
So all you have to use is the code TODAY25 at riflepaperco.com. By the way, that's great texture. Isn't that a cute summer I gift? It. I love it. It's like the We're perfect. not over too And far. the basket. Oh, yeah. See, so look. You can look. Look how we look and have this totality. out back. You could have it out back in your back porch. Yes. I love it. When I you love that? I think it's super cute. Okay, finally, you know we love a weird little gadget at Jenna's mm -hmm. bookstore. What is so this? So look at this. This is a tablet outdoor guard glare. Wait, you know when you're about? reading on your phone? Yes. Or you're reading on your hey, iPad sure. yeah. so and, it, it and you get the glare? You just this hold thing it like that? This thing shades it. Wait, it what? It also keeps it nice and cool so it doesn't overheat. It suctions the back of the de device and opens up as a fan, see? So then you can you read. Wait, so you can read. And you open it and up. Open it up like a fan. And of course, I'm not that coordinated, well, we're not, but, but here we go. Yep. And you can guard it. It's By $16. The way, that's such a cute Isn't that cool? and easy idea because you're right, the glare. It's hard to read. It's hard to read. So you have to um, go to uncommongoods.com. Okay, all these are all great ones, great ones. Yeah, so to check out these products, head to todaycom slash read with Jenna. All right, coming up next, what is your sign? We've got an astrology outlook for the months ahead coming up right after this. Clever idea. It's kind of cool. Fun. her birthday which means it's Leo season so we thought it'd be a good time to see what the stars have in, star in store for us. Here with an outlook for the months ahead is astrologer and author of Cosmic Health Jennifer Rassiope. Jennifer we're happy you're here. Oh my god thank you so much and happy birthday. Thank you so August the summer's kind of winding down yeah. so according to the stars how's everything looking for the rest of summer? Yeah so we're in the wind down phase we're at the end of Venus retrograde so we're taking a look backwards we're getting ready for September September dubs as a fresh start but by September 15th we'll be ready to launch into our new beginning so that means the next couple weeks we want to wind down we okay. want to look at where we've been reassess our mission our purpose get organized our goals and then launch full on okay we awesome. love we love this part. We love this part. So Hoda just celebrated her birthday. You have a little reading for her. Right? Yeah, I do. So Hoda, big yes. birthday in, yeah. the, in the heart of your second, second Saturn return. Again, a Saturn return is a time when you're reconfiguring your true destiny and making decisions. The year ahead for you is about emergence. There's a lot coming around the word devotion. Devotion to love, devotion to family, devotion to self. So you're in a time where it's like an uncompromising period. There certainly will be struggles and then there's big gifts coming too. So I'd say just do you by spring of 2024, you are really, things are coming together in a way where you can absolutely take a deep breath. Spring of 2024? Yes. Wow. Yeah, it's a short time. That's wow, soon. we're in 2023. Yeah, spring of 2024. But that's not less than a year away. I like away. the devotion. I like that. I like that word. There's a I lot know. about creativity too. Really? You like staying devoted to the creative path. 
I love that. Okay, I need to know about our girl Jenna. She's a Sag. Mm -hmm. So Jenna, you also have some Saturnian things going on right now. Saturn's squaring your sun. Uranus is opposing your moon. You're in a time where you can expect the unexpected. There's a lot coming through around an emergence for you as well. But it's a little topsy-turvy from here to there. That said, you have to trust your moxie, trust your boundaries, and trust that you can get the job done. You're really coming into a new version of leadership and home, family, and life. Ooh. New leadership and home, family, family and, and life. life. Wow. wow. <laughs> and boundaries. That's a big one. Yeah, work on that. I do. Yeah. Um, um, well, okay. For all of our fire signs, so we talked so about. So now we're going to fire signs, which are Leo. Oh, we're both fire oh, signs? You're a, I'm a fire? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And Leo? Leo okay. I guess that Aries makes sense. And Aries. And okay. Aries. Those are three of my favorite signs. Yes. So, okay. The North Node of Fate and Destiny is now in Aries, so doors are opening. Just because doors are opening doesn't mean we all feel ready to move through them, especially our fire signs, but you gotta go anyway. You may drop some balls along the way. There may be some people disappointed, but trust that people can handle you. You've come a long way and you can do this. All right, oh, cool. let's go to Earth signs. Who's in that category? So Earth signs, we have Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Of all the signs, you have the most going on right now. We're all going through something, dealing with a challenge. Um, for our Earth signs, it may feel multiplied. If that's the, if that's the case, you have to trust that chaos Chaos ushers growth, and that you oh, have good. to fall in love with your fate. Your destiny is emerging. Take the shot. If you miss it, you'll get something better on the rebound. Ooh, take the take shot. The shot. Okay, right. finally, um, we have our air signs. Yep. Well, not finally. We have one more, too. <laughs> but this is Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Yep, so Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius are in a season where people from the past are coming back. But here's what you need to know, our air signs, or anyone, if this resonates. You don't have to keep harmony at all costs. Hmm. That's interesting. Other people may be projecting shadows, unconscious parts on you, and you have to own what's truly yours. Draw the line, have the boundary, get better at that piece, and just trust that you can say what you need to say, and they may not get it, but saying it is healthy for you. And that's the conflict, and it will, it will resolve. Mm, okay, wow. Okay, okay we got water, water signs. signs. So these are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Yeah, so our water signs, um, Saturn, the planet of discipline and structures, and Pisces, you guys are making deep, soul-abiding commitments. You're adept at feeling pain, but what you need to know is not everything needs to hurt to heal. Mm. Sleep is your friend. Rest is your friend. Prioritizing your inner life is, is what you're most called to do right now. You're making huge commitments and laying bricks for future. Um, and so it can feel challenging, but the trick is to balance it with some rest and sleep. Awesome. Oh my gosh, you're this always so, so great. Enlightening. Thank you so we much. love can we keep our papers? Yes, yeah, of okay. course. I like to I know we need to study them. We like them. to study them and learn. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you. you so and we'll be back right after this. So cool. I also wrote you Good morning, welcome to today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on, I'm just gonna say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yep. Coming up tomorrow, one of our favorites, Cheryl Lee Ralph oh, will be here. We're so excited. Plus, a feel good performance by singer Jason Mraz. Oh, love it. And then Justin, who did such a great job it filling was so in. Fun. He'll be back with the scoop. Okay, well, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Because it's, it's Matoda's first day back, yeah, which and was Monday, Monday, which means tomorrow is her second day back, okay. and it'll be Tuesday. Bye. Bye.
sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. I'm Elena Besser. I'm Priyanka Knight. I'm Kevin Curry. And we're whipping up our favorite 30 minute meals for the Today table. Don't get me wrong. I love spending time in the kitchen to unwind. But there are some days when you just want to get dinner on the table fast. So today we're making three speedy recipes that are just perfect for busy weeknights. I'm making a twist on falafel for all of you buffalo wing lovers out there. I'm making a savory stuffed French toast. I'm making chicken gyros that can be grilled up in a flash. Set your timer and set the table. It's time to get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I absolutely love buffalo wings. I am so obsessed that I actually have a photo of wings hanging above my bed. Anyway, I also love the food and flavors from Israel. Half of my family lives there and I am always inspired by their cuisine. So today I am creating a mashup of my favorite foods, buffalo wings and falafel. The first thing I'm gonna do is jazz up my favorite hot sauce. So we are going to add in cubed butter to a saucepan over a medium heat, a nice gorgeous cup of hot sauce. You can use whatever favorite hot sauce you have on hand. And then for a little extra pizzazz, we are adding in some garlic powder. And we are going to whisk this together until all of that butter is melted and we have a nice gorgeously orange sauce. And this is going to happen very quickly. Okay, we will set this aside. Let's get going on our falafel. So to save time in this recipe, because we really wanna make sure that we keep it in the 30 minute mark, we are using canned chickpeas. I know this could be controversial, don't tell my cousins back in Israel. We're gonna start by pulsing these up. See that? It looks really nice and ground up. So we are transferring these back into the bowl from whence they came, and we will mix up the rest of our ingredients. Shallot. A shallot is awesome. It's kind of like a combination of an onion and garlic. It has those nice garlic notes in it. So we are going to rock our knife back and forth like so until we get about a tablespoon's worth of shallot. And this is gonna go into our creamy dill sauce, which is basically like a fun yogurt-based version of ranch. I'm a ranch gal. If you're a blue cheese person, feel free to add a little bit of blue cheese to that mixture. Pop it into a little bowl. With the rest of this, since it's all going into the food processor, so I've got my shallot. I got one clove of garlic. We are now going to add in some chili flake. And then we are also going to add in some parsley. And we are adding in more of my favorite, <laughs> the garlic powder. Hit it with a teeny bit of salt, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. We're gonna give it a nice fine chop. But this is really giving us a gorgeous green color. It smells so fresh. Okay, so we're just gonna take this mixture and we are going to add it to our chickpeas. In order to make sure all of this falafel goodness binds together, we are going to add in some cornstarch and then we are going to add in a little bit of baking powder to give it some lift. We're going to add some kosher salt as well. And then we are going to again fold this mixture together. I'm gonna go get a new pan so we can fry up our falafel. We're using neutral oil here. Pour that right into a heavy bottom skillet. I have a little scooper to help me create these into one ounce portions. You'll just kind of press 
that mixture into the cookie scoop. And then we're going to push it down. Okay, our oil is properly preheated. We have our falafel ready to rock. Let's fry these up. Make sure that you don't overcrowd the pan because we're going to want to move these around a bit as they cook. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it's too crowded in there. Even before I flip these, you can see how it is starting to get nice and golden brown on the edges. That is what we're looking for, and that is when we know we're getting really close to flipping these falafel. Ah, oh, yeah. Check that out. Now that these are done and draining on a wire rack, I'm gonna sprinkle them with some salt. And then I'm gonna fry up this next batch and when we get back, we will make our creamy dill sauce. My falafel is all fried up and now I'm going to make a creamy dill sauce. Let's get into it. We have a beautiful cup of full fat Greek yogurt here and we're just gonna take that minced shallot that we prepared earlier. We wanna add in the juice and zest of some lemon. Take any of that extra zest that's hanging out. We will slice this lemon in half, and then citrus press, such a great tool. We are going to add in a little bit of kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper. Just going to twist off those beautiful fronds of dill. We're looking for about two tablespoons of dill here. Add some garlic powder right on in. And because Greek yogurt tends to be on the thicker side, what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of room temperature water just to thin it all out and make it a more spreadable consistency for our pita. I love to create a little carrot salad to go with this. We're going to combine some dill pickles for a little extra brininess and some added crunch. We are just going to slice these into thin matchsticks. So we'll start by going lengthwise, really thin down those pickles, and we will take our knife and we'll just rock it back and forth to get these really nice thin strips of pickle. Put them into this big bowl here, and next up it's carrot time. And we are going to start by just peeling the exterior off of these carrots, like so. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're just gonna take our carrot and from top to bottom, we are going to slice these carrots into beautiful ribbons. Look at that, gorgeous. Add that to the bowl and just keep on going. Next up, we are going to add the juice of our lemon just to bring out even more brightness in this salad that we're creating. We also wanna make sure that we add in our parsley and we're going to bunch this on up and give it a nice fine chop. It's almost time for dinner. Okay, season it with a little bit more kosher salt, a little freshly ground black pepper, and then a nice drizzle of olive oil. So I'm just gonna give this a good toss. Beautiful. All of our components are done. I am ready to assemble the meze platter. Let's start with our carrot salad. So this is looking gorgeous. It is time to adorn our falafel in our sauce. So I'm just gonna take this sauce, take a brush, and brush it right over the tops. And then we're gonna do a little flipperoo. Make sure we get them on both sides. We've been working so hard to do this, so it's time. Let's get after it. This is the best way to get that sauce in every bite. Then we're going to take a little bit of our salad, pop that in the bottom, take a couple of our little falafel nuggets. I'm gonna put three in there. Yeah, full house. A little bit more sauce in there. Oh my goodness. Check it out. Hold for sound effects. Mmm. Wow. It is warm and crunchy and fresh from that salad. The buffalo is giving me the perfect amount of heat. And that creamy dill, it just mellows it all out. I love this. I know your whole entire family is going to love this.
One of my favorite food memories is enjoying the spicy egg-coated toast my uncle and auntie would make for us on our annual family trips to India. They lived on a large farm, so everything we ate was incredibly fresh. When I went vegan, I wanted to recreate that experience, but without those farm fresh eggs. Well guys, I think I've cracked the code with this recipe for my savory Indian French toast. Let's start things off with the vegan batter. Okay, so first we're gonna dice up one small red onion. We're actually gonna just give these a fine dice and then we're gonna saute it up a little bit. So let's get our nonstick skillet on medium high heat. And while that heats up, we're gonna coat it with some neutral oil. So let's get these red onions in. It's exactly what you wanna hear. You want them to evenly cook throughout. This looks awesome. Just wanna show you the coloring on this. They're nice and glossy. This is exactly what we want. So we're gonna turn the heat off and just let them sit. This is our next main component to the batter. So we're using Thai green chilies. I never de chilies, nor should you. So we're basically just gonna run our knife through this and give this a rough chop. Now that we've minced up our green chilies, we wanna get started on our batter. So we're using chickpea flour, which we call basin flour at home, which is simply ground dried chickpeas. And to this, we're gonna actually whisk in some water. And you wanna do this gradually because the chickpea flour can easily clump up. So our batter is looking good. The next ingredient that we wanna prepare are some dried spices. So in my mortar and pestle, I'm gonna add one of my favorite spices from my masala dabi, cumin seeds or what we call jeera. So we're just gonna add the whole cumin seeds here. We're gonna take our pestle and we're gonna grind them down just to a rough grind. Okay, great. So we have a rough grind on our cumin, which is beautiful. So I'm gonna add that to our batter and we're gonna add our green chilies and we're gonna add some salt. And then we wanna add our sauteed onions. You're probably wondering, Priyanka, what is going on with the sauteed onions? Well, don't worry, they're waiting for us. So I'm gonna mix this up and you wanna be gentle when mixing it because you don't wanna break up the chilies and the onions in there. And we have one more ingredient to add to our batter some fresh coriander. This is gonna add a lot of freshness and brightness. We're gonna get it right into the batter. Give that a quick mix. And now it's time to start assembling our French toast. So I wanna show you the selection of cheeses I'm working with here because this is super exciting. Not only because one, these are all so delicious, but two, these are all vegan. So we have some smoked Gouda. Then we have a cheddar here, which honestly, this looks like an artisanal cheddar that you could probably get at some like fancy cheese shop, but it's vegan. All right, so to our bread, we're gonna add our cheese. I'm gonna do smoked Gouda in this one. We're gonna do two slices. We're gonna close her up and then it's battering time. Take your bread, give her a nice dunk. Nice and coated. Okay, to our hot skillet, we're gonna get in some vegan butter. We want the butter to melt and get nice and bubbly, just like it is here. So you wanna see that nice sizzle on the edges and you'll see that it's starting to get golden. You could give it a little bit of a press to make sure that all sides of the bread are cooking evenly. We want to cook our French toast for about five minutes on each side. It should be a nice golden brown color and that's when you'll know that the batter is cooked. This is looking fantastic. The color is great. You could see the cheese is melting. Feels crisp to touch, so we're gonna remove this bad boy. Let's build our second sandwich. So 
So our sandwiches look amazing, but we still have some leftover batter, but we don't need to waste this because this is not like the traditional egg batter from a French toast. So we're actually gonna make my version of chewy, which are chickpea flour based pancakes. So we already have our skillet here, and to this we're gonna add some neutral oil. We want a good amount of oil here because this is gonna be like a little bit like a shallow fry of the batter. Let's give these a flip. Beautiful, that's exactly what we're looking for, that golden brown. We have our French toast, we have our chewy pancakes, so I'm ready to serve everything up. So what I like to do is I like to take the French toast and cut it in half so we can reveal the beautiful inside. So first we're gonna drizzle it with the traditional maple syrup. Now this might sound weird, but the sweetness of the maple syrup goes really well with the spice. Kind of think of it like eating bacon with maple syrup, but this is not bacon. We're gonna add a little bit of chaat masala. So chaat masala is probably one of the most widely used spice mixes in India. And it has a bunch of different spices like mango powder, which is a little bit tangy, black salt, which kind of has that umami salty flavor, cumin, coriander, so many things. And we're gonna add a little cheek of lemon because this is gonna add that freshness and brightness that's gonna go really well with every bite you take. There we have it. We're gonna take our French toast. We're gonna do a little dunk. Oh my God. Mmm. It's like I never left India. The chilies, the coriander, they're so fresh and so vibrant. And I love the textures on this. And we did this all in just 30 minutes. How cool is that? Gyros are an iconic Greek staple. Now traditionally, the meat is stacked on a vertical spit so you can get a, a mix of crispy and juicy meat pieces. Thankfully, for my version, you don't need a giant spit in your kitchen. <laughs> so my marinade is really simple. We're just gonna use a little bit of lemon. I'm gonna slice this. I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice. Squeeze it into a bowl. Also gonna be adding in some red wine vinegar. And then some personality for this, we're gonna keep it really simple and adding in some dried oregano. Pinch of salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Whisk this up. There you go. Now I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to our chicken breast. All right, so I'm gonna butterfly this chicken first just to get it a little bit thinner. And when we thin it out, you can have and much more even cooking throughout the chicken. Open it up and it makes a beautiful little heart just like this. So now, we're gonna flatten this out a little bit more. I'm gonna take some plastic wrap. I'm gonna add one of the pieces to it. I'm gonna use this mallet, it's a little bit easier. We're just gonna flatten it out. 
If you have a rolling pin as well for baking, use that. Again, we're just trying to flatten this out. This is not a contest that you're at the local fair trying to win a teddy bear for somebody. So we're gonna add our piece of chicken right here to our marinade. So I'm gonna let this rest at room temperature, but you can also do this as a make-ahead recipe and do it overnight, but not too long because the chicken will come out mushy. Now you can't have a gyro without a creamy yogurt sauce, and here is my speedy one. So we're gonna line a bowl with some heavy-duty paper towels and grate this cucumber right into the bowl. And the reason we're doing this is cucumber is, it's a whole lot of water. There we go, looks just like this. Now, I'm gonna make this sweat just a bit by adding in a pinch of salt. Mm. Now we're gonna set this aside, let this rest, and then prepare the rest of our sauce. Starting off here with some thick Greek yogurt, super high in protein. We're gonna make this really bright today. <laughs> let this whole lemon. And then I am a garlic lover. I know I like a little bit of breath stink in my recipes, so I'm gonna use at least one, but if you use two, I would not be mad about that at all. Garlic adds a whole lot of flavor. Hit it with a splash of vinegar. Some red wine vinegar. I like dill, so I'm kinda heavy-handed with it. There we go. Pinch of sea salt. Some black pepper. And then we're gonna finish it off with some heart healthy olive oil. Again, this is my version. I don't want all the Greek grandmothers outside my door telling me, this is not right, Kev. No, this is just hero ish, tzatziki ish, okay? Mix this together. Don't worry, I have not forgot about our cucumber. We're gonna mix this first. Look at that. Beautiful, creamy sauce. Head back to check on our cucumber. Exactly what we want here, squeeze it. You don't have to go overboard here either. I mean, if you're squeezing so hard that it's tearing through the paper towel, it could either be the paper towel or it could just be you, Hercules. And now just fold everything together. Look how beautiful this is. Mmm, our tzatziki is looking really good. It's time to get our veggies. Now our grill pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of avocado oil to spray. Boom, and to take our chicken, shake off some of the excess marinade. In goes the chicken. We love that sound. Pinch of salt, just a little pinch, don't need much. So we're gonna cook this chicken for about four minutes on each side. Ready for the flip, here we go. One, two, three, flipping it over, boom. Look at that. Beauty! Look at them grill marks, y'all. <laughs> and as it's finishing up, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit more lemon on there. Just some citrus love. Woo! Look at that. Is it ready? And it lifts all the way up very easily. Boom. And if you need to, you can spray your grill pan just a little bit more. Shake off the excess marinade. And in goes the other piece of chicken. Now, keep this grill hot. I'm gonna do a light spray, some oil. Now, we still have the flavor from the chicken and the marinade there. I'm gonna put our pitas right on in there. Get them gently pressed down, just make sure it's not burning. We just wanna cook it long enough where there's a little bit of color on there. All right, this is really nice. I'm gonna turn off our pan. So we let our chicken rest for about five minutes, so now all those juices won't run out as we slice it up. And now it's time to build our sandwich. We got our fresh veggies here. We're making gyros, we're making gyros. Okay, so we're gonna open up our pita here. Gonna add in some of our creamy tzatziki. And then add in some lettuce. Stuff it all the way up in there. Get some tomato. A Little bit of onion action here. And then don't forget the feta. It's like a double cream factor with the tzatziki. And then take our chicken, mm hmm and just load this bad boy up. Oh, wow. All right, this looks amazing. Can't wait to take a bite. Mm hmm I mean, if that was a mic, I'm dropping it right there. So darn easy, so darn delicious. 
Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off and then I'm going to cut it in half like so. We'll go from the top to the back like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies were really running away from me here. <laughs> okay. We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies, because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous we're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken. So it's good, we'll have a little for me and the rest for my sibbies. 
Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> so we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store bought. I'm taking a little bit of all purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it, bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book. And dress it right over the top. You're cute, you're gorgeous. I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do. Slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. It is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it.
absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing and the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. Here we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. All right, and you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions and we're gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover and if you love Italian food, you gotta be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not gonna peel them. I'm just gonna begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you, that's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, stack the leaves. I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, it can, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock, pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt, some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Do we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat, bring the heat. All right, some red pepper, boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna to wanna to reduce the heat down to a simmer.
we're gonna take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the other kale over, and I'm gonna take out the big stem. Take it at the very top, and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right out. And then just do a chop. Just like this. This is great. Still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale. Beautiful. And this is some cheese fuel tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop. Oh yeah, we've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano. If you want some, beautiful. Basil, there we go. And look at this, holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my lord, that is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You wanna come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get 
that all in. So then we want to just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. And we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers, okay? And now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we use to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. 
So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced but it's still nice and saucy and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle. And let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we wanna do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't wanna to develop too much gluten, but we also wanna make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. 
we're just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour and we'll just keep mixing. Our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? <laughs> it's what it feels like. Okay, and now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough. Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I wanna get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though. I mean, it's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling. It is time to cook our gnocchi and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully and we can use our fingers to plop these in because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy and Dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. 
So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly add in our parm. Keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice, even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. Oh my gosh, you guys, how gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm, some freshly ground black pepper, and then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, a little drizzle of olive oil, gives the pasta gorgeous sheen, and there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef, but this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme 
and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some baby bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo, Kev, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry, mushrooms are kinda like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up. And look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it. But again, this is a no mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen, the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer, and then, I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. If you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I'm gonna set this over here. Now, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now, there's a lot of chicken flavor here already, so we want that. We've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. That's a little bit, just to create some steam. And also this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms. I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water. It's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy and that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon and just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer, and you can see right here inside, got the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein, 
and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell of vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. You like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and then today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh. Look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. This will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish. on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne alla vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with the crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium-low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. 
Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you want to start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this we're going to add a layer of olive oil and we're also going to add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy, so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really, we haven't been. So get this incorporated into the onions. So, the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out. As well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky, and in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great, look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in, and you can see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil. Right in, and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column, and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli, and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate.
pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy salted water. So we're actually gonna add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. We want to make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy breadcrumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan. And then if we want to be extra fancy, we can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. We're serving up the best brunch ever for the Today Table. This morning, we're cooking up three cozy dishes that will satisfy anyone on Team Savory or Team Sweet. I'll be making cheesy loaded potato waffles with bacon. And I'll be whipping up a decadent French toast bake with a banana's foster sauce. And I'm making three colorful rainbow smoothie bowls with homemade granola. Whether you're planning a special meal or just want to make the weekends more fun, it's time to build a better brunch. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. When I was a kid, my mom made most of the meals during the week. But on the weekends, my dad took charge of breakfast duty. French toast was his specialty, so I'm getting super nostalgic today with an amped up version of my childhood fave. The Bananas Foster Sauce takes French toast to the next level in this recipe. I mean, who doesn't love a little rum in the morning? But first, let's get started with the luscious custard. I'm going to start by combining all of my dry ingredients. We are going in with one cup of granulated sugar. We are going to add in one teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm also going to be adding in some warming spices. So we have our classic ground cinnamon right here. And then as an optional add-on, I'm also going to be adding in some ground nutmeg and some ground ginger powder. My dad only used cinnamon, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a restaurant quality twist. Next up, we are going to add our wet ingredients. We have heavy cream. This is going to make it super rich and luxurious. We have some whole milk. We'll whisk this on up. We're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm actually going to crack my eggs into this measuring cup, and then I will put them into the large bowl. The reason why is if I accidentally get any shells, I'll be very easily able to remove them. Going to break up all of these yolks and give it a nice whisk. We will add that into our liquid mixture. And this is a standard custard that we've just made here. Okay, so now that our custard is done, we are going to butter our nine by 13 inch baking dish. 
My favorite way to butter a dish is to actually use a paper towel. It does a really great job of grabbing onto the butter and allowing you to get into all of those nooks and crannies. We are using challah bread today. It just does such a good job of absorbing that custard and it gives you a really creamy French toast that still has a nice crispy exterior. So we have sliced up this challah into one inch thick pieces and we've dried it out. When you dry out your bread, it actually does a better job of absorbing all of the custard. Okay, time to delicately pour our custard over the top of this French toast. And something that I also really like to do is I'll just take these pieces and kind of press them down into the custard, give it a nice custard bath. It's so funny because when I think about the French toast that my dad used to make, super simple. It was white bread, egg, milk. He didn't even measure it. But the best thing was the song that he sang. He used to, <laughs> while he'd be making the French toast, he would sing this song. And I remember it very vividly to this day. It goes, French toasty, French toasty. It's the toasty with the most D. And he would just sing it over and over again. And he'd be like, sing it with me. And we'd be like, French toasty, French toasty. It's the toasty with the most D. Good times, ah, oh, the good old days to be a kid. I like to cover this and pop it into the refrigerator for at least one hour to soak up all of that custardy goodness. Then when I'm ready to bake, I will preheat my oven to 350 degrees pop this into the oven and cook it for about 40 to 45 minutes. While our French toast is baking up in the oven, I'm gonna get started on our bananas foster sauce. We have three medium ripe bananas and we're just going to peel them. And this is a really fun alternative to maple syrup. And then I like cutting these on a bias. It just looks really elevated when you slice it on an angle. We'll do the same with the rest of these. We're gonna toast them up before we serve them. So we'll turn our heat to low, add in one tablespoon of unsalted butter. Now that our butter is nice and bubbly, we are going to add our bananas into the pan. Toss those in there. We just want to get some nice caramelization. The butter is also going to flavor those bananas really nicely. And as you can see, they're getting a nice, subtle, golden color to them. All right, so we've gotten some of that brown consistency on the bottom here. We are going to transfer these bananas over and we'll get to work on our sauce. This is the fun part. We are going to add in our one stick of butter. We're going to combine it with one cup of brown sugar. Whisk this all together. And what we're looking for here is a nice silky brown sugar sauce. And we want the brown sugar to completely dissolve. It is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is time to flambe. We are adding in a quarter cup of spiced rum to our mixture. Here we go. There we go. Be really careful. And then we are going to turn off the heat. We're going to add in a quarter cup of heavy cream. This is optional. I just like adding a little extra creaminess to our sauce. A pinch of salt to awaken the flavor. <laughs> you guessed it. One teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We're gonna whisk this on up. 
And there you have it, our Bananas Foster sauce. Stunning! Our French toast is out of the oven, looking gorgeous and golden. I love to let it sit for about 10 minutes before cutting into it because it's super hot. And when I serve this up, I love to take the bananas and just adorn the tops of the French toast with those golden banana pieces. Let's slice into this thing. And then handy dandy fish spatula, really nice and bendy, gets into those nooks and crannies of the pan. We'll lift that out. Look at that. I'm gonna take a little sneak bite. Oh yeah, check that out. Should we give it a taste? I need a bit of banana. The perfect bite. Cheers. Man oh man, this is a hug. It is transporting me back to my childhood. I know my dad would love this. You know what? This tastes so good, it makes me want to sing. French toasty, French toasty. It's the toasty with the mosty. Yeah. These crispy potato waffles are packed with tons of flavor, but wouldn't be brunch without the star, bacon. So I'm gonna start off by showing y'all my favorite way to make bacon. I'm gonna get a baking tray and then a baking rack. Now I love doing this because you're gonna get all of the bacon fat drippings right here in this pan. But we're not gonna waste the drippings, we're actually gonna use them to cook up the onion and the garlic for later on. Now I'm gonna cook this in the oven for about 13 to 15 minutes at 420 degrees. So next, we are going to mince up some garlic and slice up some onion. We're gonna dice up the onion pretty small because remember, we're gonna fold this into our potato mash batter. Smash up some garlic, mince it up. I'll just mash these up. And when you're making this recipe too, I find that it's easier to use cold ingredients just because whenever we're mixing everything together, <laughs> it's going to hold. That's beautiful. Now I'm going to just grate some cheese. I think cheddar is the way to go for this recipe. Okay, our potatoes are mashed. The cheese is grated, onions and garlic are minced and ready to go, and I smell bacon. We're gonna take our strips of bacon, place them here, and nice and crispy. And we're gonna use some of the oil, you get the drippings. We're gonna add that to our skillet so we can fry up the onion. We're gonna set our skillet to a medium heat 
And while that's heating up, I'm gonna start to chop up the bacon. And mm -hmm. this is the hardest part of the recipe because you're gonna wanna start eating it. It's so good. Mm. In go the onion and garlic. Yeah, get that nice little sizzle. Now, while that's cooking up, let's begin to bring everything together. I'm gonna add in some eggs. Crack the eggs in there. I'm just gonna break up the yolks just a little bit. And then add in the star crispy bacon. We're gonna fold in a little bit of yogurt. This is some Greek yogurt, our cream factor. It's also gonna boost the protein a little bit as well. Keep stirring those onions, or you know, you gotta keep moving when it's brunch time. Multitasking in the kitchen. It is a must. Then, I'm also gonna add in some flour, especially because we've added in some wet ingredients. Sprinkle in a little bit of flour. And then in goes the cheese. Pinch of salt. And then some more black pepper. Now, let me show you something. These onions are looking great. Let the onions rest on a paper towel just to drain out some of the excess oil. Great color. There you go. Spread it out. Adding in now the onion and garlic, our flavor to this recipe. Boom. Now let's mix it together the same way that you would a waffle batter. All right, and look at this. This is the way that your batter should look. All this cheesy goodness with bacon and chunks of potato. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and grab my waffle maker. So my waffle iron is preheated to a medium high heat so we get a nice crisp on there. And since it's already nice and hot, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of avocado oil. Boom. And then in goes our potato batter. Look at this goodness. Mm. Spread it out there. Not too much, not too heavy handed. Pat it down and then mash it. Boom. Spin it. And then just wait. Wait for the goodness to come to life. We are nearing the five minute mark. So we're gonna flip it and build the better brunch. Here we go. One, two, three, open it up. Whoa! And you see all of the crispiness. You see this golden color because that's also the cheese. Oh, the cheese has helped it to get nice and crispy on the outside. Look at that beauty. Oh my gosh. All right, let's add our toppings. So I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of Greek yogurt, a little dollop here. Looks kind of like whipped cream, right? Then a little bit of green onion action. Some leftover bacon. <laughs> Who has leftover bacon in their house? Come on, let's just be real. And then a little bit of cheese. Here we go. Boom, beautiful. And for the homie in your kitchen, Boom. I, I gotta get into this and do the hard job and taste it for the internet since you can't be here. You can taste it pretty soon in your own kitchen though. You hear the crunchiness? Look at that. Oh, that potato. There we go. This is a perfect brunch meal and guess what? It's so filling. I know for certain you will have a better brunch if you make these crispy potato waffles.
Brunch is a great way to spend time with family and friends over delicious food. But for me, it's also about posting beautiful food pics on the gram. Today I'm making three nutrient-packed smoothie bowls that are pleasing to the eye and even more pleasing to eat. First up, I'm gonna get started with a crunchy topping, my saffron cardamom granola. So I'm gonna start with my saffron syrup. So the first step is to add equal parts water and sugar. We wanna stir it constantly until the sugar is completely dissolved and it comes to a simmer. And once that sugar is dissolved, we're gonna add in our beautiful saffron threads. Look at that color, it's really starting to get dark and beautiful. Okay, so my saffron syrup is done, so I'm gonna cut the heat. I'm gonna pour my saffron syrup into a mason jar so I can cool it and store it. And as it cools, it's gonna thicken up a bit more. So this is not a traditional granola by any means. So first, we're gonna start with our liquids. We have coconut oil here, and to this, we're gonna add our cooled saffron syrup. Still can't get over the color, gorgeous. And then we also wanna add a pinch of ground cardamom. We're gonna do two pinches for good luck. A pinch of salt and some freshly grated nutmeg. So we're gonna add in all of our dry ingredients for our granola. So first, our rolled oats, our pumpkin seeds, our sliced almonds, and our coconut chips. So you get that all in along with your chia seeds. And I first like to just give this a toss because I don't want any big clumps once we pour in our liquids. Great. Our beautiful coconut oil and saffron syrup mixture goes in. Make sure to just give it a good whisk so that you don't have separation. So you pour that over. Make sure to get all those beautiful saffron threads. And then you give this a light toss. Okay. And then we wanna pour it onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And then we wanna spread this evenly. If you don't spread it evenly, it's all gonna just bake up into a clump. And the idea is to make sure that it gets nice and crisp. After I take my granola out of the oven, I'm gonna mix in some of my favorite dried fruits and we wanna do that after it comes out of the oven because we don't want these to burn and we want them to stay juicy. So we have some dates, some dried cherries, and some dried cranberries. All right, let's get our granola into the oven.
I'm all set up to make my rainbow smoothie bowls and I'm making three. The first is a mango turmeric smoothie bowl, the second is a dragon fruit rose smoothie bowl, and the third is a blue spirulina banana smoothie bowl. So let's talk about these dragon fruits. As you can see, they are absolutely gorgeous and they come in all different varieties. Yellow, pink, sometimes they're white inside, sometimes they're pink or red inside, sometimes they're gigantic like this one. But don't be intimidated because they're actually quite soft. And she's a beautiful pink one. Look how gorgeous that is. Also, this kind of matches my earrings. I have dragon fruit earrings on. The thing that I love about these smoothie bowls is they all have the same consistent base. So it's actually much easier than they look. They all start out with a coconut milk ice cube base. So we wanna start with one can of full fat coconut milk. And then we're just gonna give it a little whisk. We're gonna take our full fat coconut milk and pour it right into the tray. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good evening. We're coming on the air with breaking news out of Georgia, where former President Trump was just indicted for the fourth time, this time for his alleged efforts to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results. Let's go straight to Blaine Alexander outside the courthouse. Blaine, what do we know about the indictment? Well, Lester, we are just now getting a look at this. This has just been published on the county court's website. But as you mentioned, we do know that former President Donald Trump is among the defendants. What's remarkable here, though, Lester, is that it is not just Donald Trump. There are a number of his allies that are also being charged in this indictment. Now, we're still digging through this and finding out more about what these charges entail and who all is being charged along with the former president. But we can certainly say that already we are seeing a number that is numbering in the double digits of defendants. So this certainly sets it apart from the other legal challenges, Lester, that the former president is facing. This is an investigation that spanned more than two years and certainly is coming to a very notable uh, peak right now, Lester. All right, Blaine, thanks. With me is senior legal correspondent Laura Jarrett. Laura, walk us through what are the, the names you're seeing there suggest to you about where this goes? All right, Lester, we've got 41 counts here. We have the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, as well as several of his allies, including his attorneys, Giuliani, Eastman, Cheeseboro, Clark, Ellis. Also, we have at least one faith, uh, fake elector that I've seen here. Uh, we have David Schaefer. We also have um, Ray Stallings, another attorney, as well as uh, uh, several other allies here, Lester, as we still work through this. And all will be arraigned at a date, date that we'll learn uh, in due time. That concludes our special report. More on our streaming network, NBC News Now. I'm Lester Holt. Good evening. food colorings people one more little blitz and we're ready to go how beautiful is this and now I'm gonna make my third smoothie bowl my spirulina banana smoothie bowl like every other smoothie bowl we're gonna start with the same base next we're gonna add in a cup of frozen banana and the star of the show for this smoothie bowl is blue spirulina. So while this may look artificial, it is completely natural, it is vegan, and it's actually made from an algae. So it's from under the sea, which is why it's blue. I am so happy with this color. I cannot wait to top off these smoothie bowls. So I have my beautiful saffron cardamom granola here. So we're gonna crack that open and that's gonna be our first topping. I love the complement of the saffron and cardamom with the mango, very Indian-esque, which is fitting for me. Gorgeous. I love these little circles. We used a melon baller to scoop these out. So 
stunning. And that's it. They literally look like they taste like the rainbow, but I think I really have to go in for the blue spirulina banana one. Oh my God. This is so delicious. I mean, just look at that texture. It's like a pina colada in your mouth, but you're sitting on the beach while drinking that pina colada, something that we all want to do. So good. These rainbow smoothie bowls are a winner for any brunch table. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. I'm Elena Besser. I'm Priyanka Knight. I'm Kevin Curry. And we're whipping up our favorite 30 minute meals for the Today table. Don't get me wrong. I love spending time in the kitchen to unwind. But there are some days when you just want to get dinner on the table fast. So today we're making three speedy recipes that are just perfect for busy weeknights. I'm making a twist on falafel for all of you buffalo wing lovers out there. I'm making a savory stuffed French toast. I'm making chicken gyros that can be grilled up in a flash. Set your timer and set the table. It's time to get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor Walmart by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I absolutely love buffalo wings. I am so obsessed that I actually have a photo of wings hanging above my bed. Anyway, I also love the food and flavors from Israel. Half of my family lives there and I am always inspired by their cuisine. So today I am creating a mashup of my favorite foods, buffalo wings and falafel. The first thing I'm gonna do is jazz up my favorite hot sauce. So we are going to add in cubed butter to a saucepan over a medium heat. A nice gorgeous cup of hot sauce. You can use whatever favorite hot sauce you have on hand. And then for a little extra pizzazz, we are adding in some garlic powder. And we are going to whisk this together until all of that butter is melted and we have a nice gorgeously orange sauce. And this is going to happen very quickly. Okay, we will set this aside. Let's get going on our falafel. So to save time in this recipe, because we really wanna make sure that we keep it in the 30 minute mark, we are using canned chickpeas. I know this could be controversial, don't tell my cousins back in Israel. We're gonna start by pulsing these up. See that? It looks really nice and ground up. So we are transferring these back into the bowl from whence they came, and we will mix up the rest of our ingredients. Shallot. A shallot is awesome. It's kind of like a combination of an onion and garlic. It has those nice garlic notes in it. So we are going to rock our knife back and forth like so until we get about a tablespoon's worth of shallot. And this is gonna go into our creamy dill sauce, which is basically like a fun yogurt-based version of ranch. I'm a ranch gal. If you're a blue cheese person, feel free to add a little bit of blue cheese to that mixture. Pop it into a little bowl. With the rest of this, since it's all going into the food processor, so I've got my shallot. I got one clove of garlic. We are now going to add in some chili flake. And then we are also going to add in some parsley. And we are adding in more of my favorite, <laughs> the garlic powder. Hit it with a teeny bit of salt, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. We're gonna give it a nice fine chop. But this is really giving us a gorgeous green color. It smells so fresh. 
Okay, so we're just gonna take this mixture and we are going to add it to our chickpeas. In order to make sure all of this falafel goodness binds together, we are going to add in some cornstarch and then we are going to add in a little bit of baking powder to give it some lift. We're going to add some kosher salt as well. And then we are going to, again, fold this mixture together. I'm gonna go get a new pan so we can fry up our falafel. We are using neutral oil here. Pour that right into a heavy bottom skillet. I have a little scooper to help me create these into one ounce portions. You'll just kind of press that mixture into the cookie scoop. And then we're going to push it down. Okay, our oil is properly preheated. We have our falafel ready to rock. Let's fry these up. Make sure that you don't overcrowd the pan because we're going to want to move these around a bit as they cook. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it's too crowded in there. Even before I flip these, you can see how it is starting to get nice and golden brown on the edges. That is what we're looking for, and that is when we know we're getting really close to flipping these falafel. Ah, uh, yeah. Check that out. Now that these are done and draining on a wire rack, I'm gonna sprinkle them with some salt. And then I'm gonna fry up this next batch and when we get back, we will make our creamy dill sauce. My falafel is all fried up and now I'm going to make a creamy dill sauce. Let's get into it. We have a beautiful cup of full fat Greek yogurt here and we're just gonna take that minced shallot that we prepared earlier. We wanna add in the juice and zest of some lemon. Take any of that extra zest that's hanging out. We will slice this lemon in half, and then citrus press, such a great tool. We are going to add in a little bit of kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper. Just going to twist off those beautiful fronds of dill. We're looking for about two tablespoons of dill here. Add some garlic powder right on in. And because Greek yogurt tends to be on the thicker side, what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of room temperature water just to thin it all out. 
and make it a more spreadable consistency for our pita. I love to create a little carrot salad to go with this. We're going to combine some dill pickles for a little extra brininess and some added crunch. We are just going to slice these into thin matchsticks. So we'll start by going lengthwise, really thin down those pickles. And we will take our knife and we'll just rock it back and forth to get these really nice thin strips of pickle. Put them into this big bowl here. And next up, it's carrot time. And we are going to start by just peeling the exterior off of these carrots, like so. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just gonna take our carrot and from top to bottom, we are going to slice these carrots into beautiful ribbons. Look at that, gorgeous. Add that to the bowl and just keep on going. Next up, we are going to add the juice of our lemon, just to bring out even more brightness in this salad that we're creating. We also wanna make sure that we add in our parsley, and we're going to bunch this on up and give it a nice, fine chop. It's almost time for dinner. Okay, season it with a little bit more kosher salt, a little freshly ground black pepper, and then, a nice drizzle of olive oil. So I'm just gonna give this a good toss. Beautiful. All of our components are done. I am ready to assemble the meze platter. Let's start with our carrot salad. So this is looking gorgeous. It is time to adorn our falafel in our sauce. So I'm just gonna take this sauce, take a brush, and brush it right over the tops. And then we're gonna do a little flipperoo. Make sure we get them on both sides. We've been working so hard to do this, so it's time. Let's get after it. This is the best way to get that sauce in every bite. Then we're going to take a little bit of our salad, pop that in the bottom, take a couple of our little falafel nuggets. I'm gonna put three in there. Yeah, full house. A little bit more sauce in there. Oh my goodness. Check it out. Hold for sound effects. Mmm, wow, it is warm and crunchy and fresh from that salad. The buffalo is giving me the perfect amount of heat and that creamy dill, it just mellows it all out. I love this. I know your whole entire family is going to love this.
One of my favorite food memories is enjoying the spicy egg-coated toast my uncle and auntie would make for us on our annual family trips to India. They lived on a large farm, so everything we ate was incredibly fresh. When I went vegan, I wanted to recreate that experience, but without those farm fresh eggs. Well guys, I think I've cracked the code with this recipe for my savory Indian French toast. Let's start things off with the vegan batter. Okay, so first we're gonna dice up one small red onion. We're actually gonna just give these a fine dice and then we're gonna saute it up a little bit. So let's get our nonstick skillet on medium high heat. And while that heats up, we're gonna coat it with some neutral oil. So let's get these red onions in. It's exactly what you wanna hear. You want them to evenly cook throughout. This looks awesome. Just wanna show you the coloring on this. They're nice and glossy. This is exactly what we want. So we're gonna turn the heat off and just let them sit. This is our next main component to the batter. So we're using Thai green chilies. I never de seed chilies, nor should you. So we're basically just gonna run our knife through this and give this a rough chop. Now that we've minced up our green chilies, we wanna get started on our batter. So we're using chickpea flour, which we call basin flour at home, which is simply ground dried chickpeas. And to this, we're gonna actually whisk in some water. And you wanna do this gradually because the chickpea flour can easily clump up. So our batter is looking good. The next ingredient that we wanna prepare are some dried spices. So in my mortar and pestle, I'm gonna add one of my favorite spices from my masala dabi, cumin seeds, or what we call jeera. So we're just gonna add the whole cumin seeds here. We're gonna take our pestle and we're gonna grind them down just to a rough grind. Okay, great, so we have a rough grind on our cumin, which is beautiful. So I'm gonna add that to our batter and we're gonna add our green chilies and we're gonna add some salt. And then we wanna add our sauteed onions. We're probably wondering, Priyanka, what is going on with the sauteed onions? Well, don't worry, they're waiting for us. So I'm gonna mix this up and you wanna be gentle when mixing it because you don't wanna break up the chilies and the onions in there. And we have one more ingredient to add to our batter some fresh coriander. This is gonna add a lot of freshness and brightness. We're gonna get it right into the batter. Give that a quick mix. And now it's time to start assembling our French toast. So I wanna show you the selection of cheeses I'm working with here because this is super exciting. Not only because one, these are all so delicious, but two, these are all vegan. So we have some smoked Gouda. Then we have a cheddar here, which honestly, this looks like an artisanal cheddar that you could probably get at some like fancy cheese shop, but it's vegan. All right, so to our bread, we're gonna add our cheese. I'm gonna do smoked Gouda in this one. We're gonna do two slices. We're gonna close her up and then it's battering time. Take your bread, give her a nice dunk. Nice and coated. Okay, to our hot skillet, we're gonna get in some vegan butter. We want the butter to melt and get nice and bubbly, just like it is here. So you wanna see that nice sizzle on the edges and you'll see that it's starting to get golden. You could give it a little bit of a press to make sure that all sides of the bread are cooking evenly. We wanna cook our French toast for about five minutes on each side. It should be a nice golden brown color and that's when you'll know that the batter is cooked. This is looking fantastic. The color is great. You could see the cheese is melting. Feels crisp to touch, so we're gonna remove this bad boy. Let's build our second sandwich. So 
So our sandwiches look amazing, but we still have some leftover batter, but we don't need to waste this because this is not like the traditional egg batter from a French toast. So we're actually gonna make my version of chewy, which are chickpea flour based pancakes. So we already have our skillet here, and to this we're gonna add some neutral oil. We want a good amount of oil here because this is gonna be like a little bit like a shallow fry of the batter. Give these a flip. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for, that golden brown. We have our French toast, we have our chewy pancakes, so I'm ready to serve everything up. So what I like to do is I like to take the French toast and cut it in half so we can reveal the beautiful inside. So first, we're gonna drizzle it with the traditional maple syrup. Now, this might sound weird, but the sweetness of the maple syrup goes really well with the spice. Kind of think of it like eating bacon with maple syrup, but this is not bacon. We're gonna add a little bit of chaat masala. So chaat masala is probably one of the most widely used spice mixes in India, and it has a bunch of different spices, like mango powder, which is a little bit tangy, black salt, which kind of has that umami salty flavor, cumin, coriander, so many things. And we're gonna add a little cheek of lemon because this is gonna add that freshness and brightness that's gonna go really well with every bite you take. There we have it. We're gonna take our French toast, we're gonna do a little dunk. Oh my God. Mmm. Looks like I never left India. The chilies, the coriander, they're so fresh and so vibrant, and I love the textures on this, and we did this all in just 30 minutes. How cool is that? Gyros are an iconic Greek staple. Now traditionally, the meat is stacked on a vertical spit so you can get a, a mix of crispy and juicy meat pieces. Thankfully, for my version, you don't need a giant spit in your kitchen. <laughs> so my marinade is really simple. We're just gonna use a little bit of lemon. I'm gonna slice this. I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice. Squeeze it into a bowl. Also gonna be adding in some red wine vinegar. And then some personality for this, we're gonna keep it really simple and adding in some dried oregano. Pinch of salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Whisk this up. There you go. Now I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to our chicken breast. All right, so I'm gonna butterfly this chicken first just to get it a little bit thinner. And when we thin it out, you can have and much more even cooking throughout the chicken. Open it up and it makes a beautiful little heart just like this. So now, we're gonna flatten this out a little bit more. I'm gonna take some plastic wrap. I'm gonna add one of the pieces to it. I'm gonna use this mallet, it's a little bit easier. We're just gonna flatten it out. 
If you have a rolling pin as well for baking, use that. Again, we're just trying to flatten this out. This is not a contest that you're at the local fair trying to win a teddy bear for somebody. So we're gonna add our piece of chicken right here to our marinade. So I'm gonna let this rest at room temperature, but you can also do this as a make-ahead recipe and do it overnight, but not too long because the chicken will come out mushy. Now you can't have a gyro without a creamy yogurt sauce, and here is my speedy one. So we're gonna line a bowl with some heavy-duty paper towels and grate this cucumber right into the bowl. And the reason we're doing this is cucumber is, it's a whole lot of water. There we go, looks just like this. Now, I'm gonna make this sweat just a bit by adding in a pinch of salt. Mm. Now we're gonna set this aside, let this rest, and then prepare the rest of our sauce. Starting off here with some thick Greek yogurt, super high in protein. We're gonna make this really bright today. <laughs> let this whole lemon. And then I am a garlic lover. I know I like a little bit of breast stink in my recipes, so I'm gonna use at least one, but if you use two, I would not be mad about that at all. Garlic adds a whole lot of flavor. Hit it with a splash of vinegar. Some red wine vinegar. I like dill, so I'm kinda heavy-handed with it. There we go. Pinch of sea salt. Some black pepper. And then we're gonna finish it off with some heart healthy olive oil. Again, this is my version. I don't want all the Greek grandmothers outside my door telling me, this is not right, Kev. No, this is just hero ish, tzatziki ish, okay? Mix this together. Don't worry, I have not forgot about our cucumber. We're gonna mix this first. Look at that. Beautiful, creamy sauce. Head back to check on our cucumber. Exactly what we want here, squeeze it. You don't have to go overboard here either. I mean, if you're squeezing so hard that it's tearing through the paper towel, it could either be the paper towel or it could just be you, Hercules. And now just fold everything together. Look how beautiful this is. Mmm, our tzatziki is looking really good. It's time to get our veggies. Now our grill pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of avocado oil to spray. Boom, I'm gonna take our chicken, shake off some of the excess marinade. In goes the chicken. We love that sound. Pinch of salt, just a little pinch, don't need much. So we're gonna cook this chicken for about four minutes on each side. Ready for the flip, here we go. One, two, three, flipping it over, boom. Look at that. Beauty! Look at them grill marks, y'all. <laughs> and as it's finishing up, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit more lemon on there. Just some citrus love. Woo! Look at that. Is it ready? And it lifts all the way up very easily. Boom. And if you need to, you can spray your grill pan just a little bit more. Shake off the excess marinade. And in goes the other piece of chicken. Now, keep this grill hot. I'm gonna do a light spray, some oil. Now, we still have the flavor from the chicken and the marinade there. I'm gonna put our pitas right on in there. Get them gently pressed down, just make sure it's not burning. We just wanna cook it long enough where there's a little bit of color on there. All right, this is really nice. I'm gonna turn off our pan. So we let our chicken rest for about five minutes, so now all those juices won't run out as we slice it up. And now it's time to build our sandwich. We got our fresh veggies here. We're making gyros, we're making gyros. Okay, so we're gonna open up our pita here. Gonna add in some of our creamy tzatziki. And then add in some lettuce. Stuff it all the way up in there. Get some tomato. A Little bit of onion action here. And then don't forget the feta. It's like a double cream factor with the tzatziki. And then take our chicken, mm hmm and just load this bad boy up. Oh, wow. All right, this looks amazing. Can't wait to take a bite. Mm hmm I mean, if that was a mic, I'm dropping it right there. So darn easy, so darn delicious. 
Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now, everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one-pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan-style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was 